A lovely Saturday morning to everyone. We are very delightful to have you join us today on our very first webinar of the educational program. In Faith Facebook Live. Let me remind our participants on Zoom to ensure you have clicked join audio upon joining us for this morning activity. All right. Good morning, partner. A good morning indeed, partner. And happy Saturday to all of our viewers. We hope you all had your breakfast and everyone's healthy and safe. And partner, balita ko, sabi mo nga kanina, we are live now on Facebook from StreamYard. And we are also live on, on Zoom for our participants who registered for this morning's webinar. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mitzi Fernandez, a third-year development communication student. And I am Justine Josaya Stiliore, a third-year doctor of veterinary medicine student in Central Luzon State University, and we will be your moderators for today's webinar episode. So guys, allow us to brief you first on today's activity. For everyone's information, the CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes We Can, is an educational program headed by Circular Daisy C. Acuna. This timely and relevant endeavor aims to enhance the soft and hard skills of the students for them to be efficient and empowered youth leaders of this technology-driven era. For that, we will air two episodes of this webinar series from September to October 2021. And for each episode, we'll be introducing everyone to at least two resource speakers with their respective topics. Like from our previous webinars, Here's a few housekeeping to take note of before we formally start off with the program. First, we encourage everyone on Zoom to kindly keep their microphone and video off during the whole presentation. For those new to using the Zoom app, uh, if you wish to ask questions, you may enter them on the chat box. If you're using a mobile device, there will be a three-dotted icon on the bottom right corner of your screen, which will have to tap. Then tap one more time on the first tab that says chat to be able to see the chat box. If you are using a computer to connect to this virtual conference, you will find chat on the meeting controls bar at the bottom of your screen. You will have to click on that for the chat box to appear. Yes, and in connection, there will be a question and answer portion after a resource speaker delivers their presentation. And at least one of our facilitators in Zoom will choose few questions to relay them to us here on StreamYard. But for those who haven't registered yet, especially to our viewers from Facebook, we also highly encourage everyone to fill out the Google form through the link that you will find either pinned at the comment section or attached to the post and certificates will only be awarded to those who get to register finish and evaluate this webinar episode again there will be a link to the to the evaluation form that will be posted later so please make sure to fill it out after this episode to claim your e-certificate Partner, nakamute ka yata. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko napansin partner. So ito na nga. We also want <laughs> take to... Take two. <laughs> yeah, take two. We also want to <laughs> remind everyone to listen attentively during the discussions because there will be one bonus question from each topic which we'll post on our official Facebook page right after this episode. In addition to that, we also encourage our participants to post their takeaways from each topic via Facebook and Twitter with the hashtags hashtag CLSU Youth Empowerment Series and hashtag CLSU Yes We Can. And from the takeaways, 
our facilitators will choose one winner from Twitter and Facebook. All the winners in the bonus question and takeaways posting will receive 50 peso, pe pesos each. Diba, partner? Ang life-changing ng ating prize. <laughs> yes, at diba, may pa-prize. So guys, bukod sa pakikinig, if possible, mag-notes din tayo. Hindi lang para sa takeaways na ipopost natin or isasagot sa bonus question, kundi para hindi natin makalimutan yung mga matututunan natin today. Di ba ayaw natin nakakalimot, partner? Yes, I agree, partner. Yes, yeah, so, but before anything else, now let's move on. As we are about to start the program, may we request everyone to remain silent for the doxology and pay respect to the singing of the Philippine National Anthem to be led by the CLSU Maestro Singers.
To formally welcome everyone and give us her opening remarks, we have Circular Daisy C. Acuna, Executive President of the Veterinary Circle 410 and the Activity Head of this program. A pleasant morning to everyone. I am extending my sincerest gratitude to our partner councils and organizations, the CLSU University Supreme Student Council, Veterinary Student Government, Development Communication Student Council, College of Engineering Student Government, CBAA Corporate Student Government, and Youth Leadership for Democracy Philippines or Youth-Led PH. I would also like to thank the all-out support of the CLSU Office of Student Affairs, CLSU Collision, Radio CLSU, College of Science Student Council, Social Sciences Student Council, and College of Education Student Council. To the organizing team from the Veterinary Circle for 10, Veterinary Student Government, and Development Communication Student Council, thank you very much for all your efforts to make this webinar episode possible. And to my fellow youth leaders out there. I hope that this initiative will ignite the leaders in you and create more effective, efficient, and empowered youth towards nation building and altruistic service to humanity. The event has just started, but I am already congratulating you for yet another set of knowledge and skills that you will gain all because you said yes because sometimes all we have to do is say yes most of the times all we have to do is believe that we can because CLS you once yes we can once again thank you very much and have fun learning Yes, thank you, Circular Daisy, for the thoughtful remarks. Sabi nga ni Circular Daisy, you know, sometimes all we have to do is say yes, and most of the times we all we all have to do is to believe that we can. So thank you so much, uh, Circular Daisy. Now to give us also an inspirational message this morning. Here is Dr. Irene G. Bustos, the current Dean of the Office of Student Affairs. Let's welcome her with a round of applause. Good day, everyone. I hope and pray that you are all safe and healthy as we face the challenges of our time. I am happy to be part of your activity, which I believe will help you transform into better leaders, leaders of today and tomorrow. I particularly like your theme, CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes, We Can. We often hear that line, Yes, We Can, in commercials, in political slogans, especially that is Barack Obama's line political line but there is something in that yes we can line that we need to unearth when we say yes we can or better yet yes i can we i you are empowering the self yourself myself we are breaking that mental prison that we are often in when we say no or I cannot. By saying yes, we can, we are liberating ourselves from doubts, fears, troubles, and we become more ready to face what is there ahead. And that is the true spirit of a leader. I know you will learn a lot from this webinar series. So I encourage all of you 
to intently participate and enjoy while you learn from the speakers. At this point, I would like to commend the sponsors of this activity, the Veterinary Circle for 10 in partnership with the CVSM Student Government. May you grow in number and conduct more noteworthy activities to unfold and develop the potentials of young leaders. Thank you very much. Let us all stay safe. Let us all do what is only good and best for us, for our family, for our university, for our countrymen, for our nation. And let us all say, with God's grace, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you so much, Mom Irene, for the inspiring message. For those who registered for today's episode, we sent you guys a Slido link via email, and it contains one question per topic to test your foreknowledge about the lecture. So our first question is, what characteristic should a 21st century youth leader possess? Ano nga ba, partner? Our dear participant, participants, we hope you spend time to answer that. And for those who haven't yet, we encourage you to spare some minute now to answer it. You may scan the QR code presented on the screen right now, or you may also click the link at the chat box or visit slido.com and enter the code 918440. Just type in your one word answer and you may submit multiple answers. Yes, the more the merrier. <laughs> and we want to hear from you guys. So tara, magsagot na tayo as a friend. Chop lang. <laughs> Habang naghihintay din tayo, here's the summary of our first Slido question. Grabe, ang dami nang nagsagot din, ano, partner? Oo nga, partner, ang dami na rin talaga nagsagot. So, saan ba dyan yung pinaka maraming number kaya na nasinagot? I believe it's responsible kasi ito yung pinaka malaki right now eh, di ba? And yes, partner. I agree. nag agree ka ba doon, partner, that a student leader should be responsible? Siyempre naman, partner, di ba? Kailangan maging responsible tayo, mga youth leader, para nang sa ganun... Uh, magawa natin lahat ng mga responsibilities natin. Yes. And bukod doon, ang dami rin nagsagot ng compassionate, wise, uh, flexible, competent, innovative, trustworthy, and empathy. Grabe. So, okay. thank you, guys. Thank you. And thank you for your participation, everyone. Simula pa lang yan. So, partner? So, without further ado, let me now introduce everyone to our first presenter. He is the Ayala Young Leaders Alumni Association's Good Citizenship Program Head, the Bilang Kabataan, Voters Education Program Co-Convener, Computer Science and mathemat Mathematics Subject Matter Expert, and a Diplomat in Training. Yes, for this first episode of our webinar series, he will be giving us his lecture on a 21st century youth leader, lessons and opportunities in a pandemic-stricken and virtual-led world. Just a simple reminder to our participants that you are, all feel, you are all free to raise and type your questions even while the presentation is ongoing, and we will have them answered later. So everyone, let us all welcome our first presenter this morning, Mr. Christopher Kuya Kit Castillo. Okay, thank you very much, Justin and Mitzi. Uh, for that kind introduction. So I'll be here this morning for our viewers to discuss on the topic uh, given to me. 
Um, thank you very much for, for that warm introduction. Later, I, I suggest you better key in your questions so at least um, so at least we can have that in our Q&A later. So I was given about 20 minutes to present on my topic. And I know for sure that many of you have been attending Zoom meetings, have been attending webinars and a lot of those things. And so I decided if, if you may allow me to just be seeing myself um, for this morning, I'm just giving you and run through some key points on how to be a 21st century leader. Earlier through your slide though, I'm very, very much thankful for the respondents, the 88 respondents and counting up to this moment on putting in and keying in what are the key characteristics of a 21st century leader? And I'm happy to see that most of the things that I will be discussing for now, which I think are already inherent with you guys, are basically uh, something that you already manifest. And I'm just here to empower you and to affirm you that this, these qualities, these characteristics are something that we need in the 21st century as a leader of CLSU. Okay, without further ado, I will just keep this with four simple letters again going back to your school c l s u i'll begin with first with your core competencies what are <clears throat> the core competencies of a 21st century leader okay first and you perhaps many of you have watched squid game i might be referring to that um netflix film in a while in during my presentation and uh, I might not be looking as one of the players there. So I can be perhaps player number four, five, seven after the last player. But I'm thankful. <clears throat> Allow me to drink first. That you're spending your morning with us. That you're spending your morning with a CLSU. And um, I was brought to here by Youth-Led. I wish to acknowledge Youth-Led for giving me a chance to speak in um, behalf of uh, in behalf of this organization of giving me a chance to talk with your youth empowerment uh, youth empowerment series and i believe this is the maiden or the first of your series for so i think this is a great chance for us to discuss about all of this is okay first core competencies okay first one critical thinking i know for sure you're a student and you have been doing this a lot of times but um, we just have to be more critical in the things that we are in this age of information a lot of things going on with all the data, with all the news feeds, and with all the things that we have in our gadgets, in our mobiles, in your homes, a lot of information. But we just have to be critical and we just have to think of proper ways on how we can be, how can we filter these things up? At times we need to, you know, put us our, ourselves off, uh, put ourselves away from this information and process it. So that one is critical thinking. Next, another C is creativity. I am thankful for the organizations of VSG for putting this up. You're very creative on how to reach more of your students, of your co-students, how to be more empowered. And this creativity, having StreamYard, having discussion. So it's just being, for me, it's more, more of a discussion because many, for example, I myself had the Zoom fatigue already. So I don't wish you to have more of the PowerPoints and all. So I'm making it more interactive as possible. And if you do have questions, please feel free. Okay, mahiya. Okay, Tagalog, English, I can answer that. Even in Thai, Hawari Kap. Okay, you can also put your questions there. So it's it's easy. Okay, critical thinking, creativity. Third, communication. So that's a good that's a good prelude. Okay, of communication that um, still we try to communicate. I am trying to give you now things. And I do hope if I wish, if I am on your shoes now, I do have a pen and a paper for me to write about the things that I will be learning for this morning. But perhaps uh, I might speak too fast. Um, I really don't have that visual. You cannot take um, screenshots of my presentation, but I'm happy that you do have this opportunity. So it's more of an, a listening exercise and putting down what is a good 21st century leader. Because I believe a 21st century leader is someone who is a good listener and a good note taker who processed information well. Anyway, moving forward, 
The fourth C is collaboration. And I believe so. When, I, when I've seen the list of organizations who put this program up, this is already a good form of collaboration. You must learn from them. And I'm seeing and reviewing the mission of CLSU when you, you go there for, for, valuing, for valuing leadership and re being responsible for being a good member. And that's one, that's collaboration. So giving, sharing your talent, sharing your time, sharing your expertise is one way of collaboration during these days. So as I said, what are the four C's, four core competencies of a 21st century leader? For others, ni na to bago kasi inuulit-ulit na lang palagi namin as a teacher. But it's for us to learn, relearn, and unlearn if there are things that might be construed or different from your thinking of our thinking or paradigm. So again, the, the four C's are critical thinking, creativity, communication, and collaboration. Okay, that's beginning with a C. Next, I've seen the video earlier and I'm perked up with a lot of energy. So sabi nga, the L is the leveling up. So we need to level up our literacies, okay? We have to level these things up. So what are the things we need to level up? First, literacy. Um, when you say exactly the word literacy, it says, how do we study words? How do we understand the letters? Or basically, are we spending too much time on social media? Are we also spending some time to read some books or that enhance our knowledge? So it's more of expanding our knowledge base. So knowledge will still be there. But as we said, there's still the component of management. So knowledge management. So we wish to expand more of our knowledge so we can help more, be more, and to collaborate more, communicate more, and be more an effective leader in the 21st century. So that's that's it. So if in case we we don't have to be stuck up in the four corners of our room, no, I know for sure uh, it will be very very difficult this trying times of pandemic. But it's still it's good to go out of our houses, take some exercise, and from that breathe, recreate, and then explore. And there are a lot of things we can learn. I myself, I'm also learning a lot. So I need to purchase and shopy the but. Shopee got this special oh, I'm promoting. So Shopee and Lazada got, got this, you know, special um, discounts for books that you can also buy. There are also some free ebooks that you can read. And I think we are all learners here because we are lifelong learners. That's also an L, the lifelong learners in ourselves. So how to level up ourselves as a 21st century in the VUCA world? VUCA means volatile, um, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world or future that we got. So we have to level up. Okay, beginning first with literacy. So what else? What other forms or things that we learn to, that we'll explore on in terms of leveling up? Next is numeracy. Yes, numeracy. Sabi nga kanina sa introduction ko, I am, a, you know, math expert. Yes, lumalaban lang po ako ng quiz bin nung bata po ako na pagkaisahan, na budol. <laughs> okay, na budol to join math quiz and you know, I can perhaps um, do some quick quick math computations in my head and it's still very very helpful. At times uh, may mga memes where where can we use where can we use calculus? I said, for example, um, the first derivative, for example, of uh, of a caramel of of, of, ano, of a of a coffee bean. The first derivative of the coffee bean is uh, the ground coffee. The second derivative would be the the coffee itself. Of, of of for example, of any variety that is that is that got. Okay, and the third derivative would be a caramel macchiato or or cappuccino, and it's up to you whatever you wish to add. So still, there are some applications. There are plenty of applications of mathematics and. Um, Yes, it's true. I'm a diplomat in training and I'm basically majoring on science diplomacy and uh, space diplomacy, climate change. So if you do have questions on that, I'm very much willing to entertain. And those are the things that we're doing in the department. Anyway, moving forward, and I believe many of you are, are aware of this. That's the third thing going forward is the scientific literacy. Um, nowadays, um, scientific advances got a lot and even pandemic is in a way scientific or evidence-based that if we wish to, for example, you are veterinarian, most of you are veterinarian, so 
if we wish to go back that uh, you know how pandemic started it is an anthropogenic disease um zone sorry zoonotic disease and it goes back and researching it goes to the you know the illegal exportation of pangolins and uh, bats and we all know that pangolins most of pangolins exported to to our very good friend uh, china is all from um from palawan which is also one of our provinces and uh, it's very sad to say that it is you know it's calling us you know the inner uh, nationalistic person in us is calling us to do something about it the, for for example all our audience here the veterinarians the uh, incoming graduates of uh, clsu and what can we do sir what can we do about it you can do a lot about it if you'll be part again i've seen on the mission and vision the mission of your school on research and extensions in vet med and allied sciences and i'm happy to see that in your mission because we need more people to do work on these things the societies the convention and legal trade of endangered species and all so these things um as a 21st century you shouldn't be aware of scientific literature but also of cultural and civic that's that's, that's the merging of it eh? aside from just knowing about science sciences about all of these things how to apply this in real life how to to do about it how can we be of help for greater number for humanity i mean that's the core concept of squid game for the love for humanity proving that there's still though there is it's morbid and gory but there's the love of humanity there at the end and uh, when the clock strikes 12 will this be someone who would help that i uh, know sorry for the spoiler would we that someone who could help that uh ailing person under the i mean receiving uh or under the winter or under snow so that's the concept of humanity and i believe so that each one of you here listening and watching from facebook and on zoom and on here in uh stream yard there is this love for humanity and at a 21st century leader i've seen there also the empath you when you're empathic and we wish to share your your skills your talents and you care for other people and that's it and that's the beginning of everything and you need not you need not much, you need not a label, you need not a name, but just have to act on it because it's a call of humanity. Na sombrang simple lang. Okay, another interesting that you need to level up is the ICT. You will also have heard in my introduction, I'm a computer science yet. You will see I'm not doing a presentation simply because there are a lot of things that I wish to say that at times I'm being imped impeded by by the presentation and i'm being booked by i'm being boxed by the presentation so i wish to be more of you know more uh relative to you reaching out to you guys um empathically reaching out to the screens because iba pa rin yung level when i wish to get back to you and ask me questions i would really want you to ask questions ano yung mga, what are the trivialities that you wish to be answered for this morning and that's being an empowered leader. Eh? You begin to ask. When you, when you begin to ask questions, then you can find, you know, some inner disturbances, the awakening that we need, for example, for you to move for something, the passion that we need for everyday life. And these are really amazing when we begin to act on it and do something about it. And that's an empowered leader. It doesn't stop here and the, on the four screens it doesn't stop here it just continue on and go on and on and then ripple exponentiates and that's how ICT you will notice as well when when I speak of ICT literacy given this pandemic you will see how I also my friend my good friend a batchmate of mine as well from Ayala Young Leaders Dr. Bandoy in a study in in Davis um um in US he studied, for example, the genome using now the data science, how data science will be very, very helpful for us, for you, the veterinary medicine students, on how to chart, for example, checking the viral uh, uh, prototype, and uh, not prototype, um, the, the variety, the variant, the variant of each of this and how we can address this and how it mutated so grabe yung skill nyo, yung, yung keenness on science and how be of help when we start with match with ICT and you are just going and learning and adding up skill, one skill after another because we, you deem, we deem that it's really very helpful and that can counteract 
for example, the development now, the quick development of virus that we have. So if not for those sciences, if not for those, okay, who also have been have background of veterinary medicines, aside from medicine, and they are collaborating. As I say so, these are just interconnected. The skill set of a 21st century le leader are interconnected because we wish to uh, reach a wider market, okay? But as, again, that's, that's basically it. And another one is financial literacy. You will notice um, here in the Philippines, we're just bounded by, you know, um, employment, okay? We're bounded by after, yeah, we just education, employment, and where is that entrepreneurial skill? So in a way, one way or another, um, we put up a school, small school in Bulacan. Um, it's a science-oriented school. And we put in the element of entrepreneurial spirit for the students. And for example, how to run, how to run their own businesses, for example, how to run off their own creative outputs of how to make of their produce, not just being a worker, but more of how to sell it and market in, in a way that it would be very helpful for their, for their own needs uh, and still elaborating and helping other people. And that's entrepreneurial skill or entrepreneurial capacity is something to be added for scientists as well. So how can you sell, how can you put value on your researches in a way that you're not stepping on other people, but rather you're helping out in the same way you're giving access to more people to that piece of information. Since it's the age of information, the battle now is information, how we process it and how we deliver it and how we give of it, okay? And also, notwithstanding our own needs that we need to eat, we need we need clothes to wear, we need um, you know we need money to go to one place to another, we need money to you know, to load up our cell phones, our mobile data, and all of these things. So financial lit literacy is also of something that we should also level up as Filipinos. So I have given much. I will just have a review. So literacy, numeracy, scientific literacy. ICT, financial, cultural, and civic. So I wish to also highlight the cultural and civic since um, I'm doing a study now on how Filipinos are appreciative of our culture. No, we have been being waved, as I said, again, the perfect example is Squid Game. We are being, you know, trending tayo sa mga Korean wave. Why are we not trending and are promoting our own? For example, SB19, for example, our own teleseries. Current, current research that uh, suggests that we have 41 countries in Africa have bought Provinciano to be shown in their own country. So that's one thing. So how do we continue promoting uh, culture and civic? That's something Filipino, okay? Or John Arcilla, for example, have won a Best Actor in the Venice Film Fest uh, on, the, on the film On the Job or Missing Eight. So this thing, so how are we being abreast or how are we learning of all these things happening around us? Na parte ng ating kultura. Jollibee, for example, Jollibee, we just have opened one in, in Madrid recently. So how are we promoting th those things? Are we really uh, supportive of our own products, of our Filipino products? And we need that, you know, uh, nation branding, okay? We are still on the, you know, we're still on the working on it. We're still on the spiral progression, moving up on the literacy or awareness level on culture and civic, but we're heading there. We're heading there. Okay, another thing. So we have the C, the L, and then the S. What are the, you know, skills pa? The super or the supra skills. Sabi ko kanina, cultural. Sabi nga natin, di ba? We are aware of our culture. And we all know we are also beauty pageant lovers. Okay, we are also beauty pageant lovers, and tonight will be, uh, I think, Miss Universe Philippines, and we say the Supra, Supra is gone, well, Dindi. Um, okay, what are those other Supra or Supra skills that we have? Okay, if you can no, no, uh, note it down first, curiosity, okay, curiosity, you just have to be curious what's going on, anong trend, kasi you just have to, with the data now, with the information, you just have to be curious, you just have to ask, that's why gusto kong kayo magtanong mamaya. If you wish to ask something, leaders are inquirers. Kaya nga na, na, nag-build up yung ating uh, newspaper na inquirer. Okay, curiosity. Second, initiative. The initiative to do things. Okay, ako na po gagawa dyan. Kahit simpleng bagay. Okay, ako na po maguhugas ng pinggan. Okay, ako na po ang magwawalis ng sala. Ako na po ang mamalansya. Ako na po ang, ako na po. 
Okay, ako na po. Yun, that's the initiative. It begins at our domestic level and our own houses. And then it will move up to bigger and bigger challenges as a leader. Okay? So curiosity, initiative, and then third, persistence. Nowadays, it is called the grit. Okay, the grit. Sabi na, the grit yung persistence sa parang... Minsan, di ba, we all know parang what's the use of what's the use of studying hard? Okay, you have, for example, um, um, Alibaba, for example, um, Bill Gates, for example, all of these people, or uh, Willie Rivillame, for example. So persistence, grit, or for ex- concrete example, Manny Pacquiao, persistence. Kung hindi siya sumika, and even Heidelin Diaz, our first gold weightlift, uh, first gold Olympic medalist. Kung hindi naging persistent si Heidelin, shall we have a gold now? Okay. I think not. I think we, we still don't have that gold. But still, still the pers- kahit may mga failures in the beginning, pero persistent ka that you want to reach your goal and you want to accomplish your dream, okay, it will happen eventually. And that's the persistence and the grit. Okay. Adaptability. Adaptability suggests that, for example, now, um, actually, I, parang napasok of my last, sorry, streamer of another discussion before. Na I got, yeah, I got, I got the Slido as well. I got this. I got the, I got Kahoot, and I got, I got, you know, I got technical difficulties, and I, I think I got lost in the middle of my discussion. That's why I just wish to have this a continuous, you know, a continuous conversation of discussing things out. If I'm if I'm already reaching my 20 minute limit, just tell me, yeah. So I think I could end my discussion. But anyway, and the next is the one important thing here is leadership. Leadership, it's there, but it is more of a summation of everything that we have discussed so far. Okay, when a CLS and still, so we have curiosity, initiative, persistence or grit adaptability, and leadership, okay? Again, leadership is the summation of all. Pag pinagsama-sama mo yung sinabi ko kanina, okay, of different levels, of different variety, and beginning with, and the most important, yung letter U, okay? Leadership, it begins with U. Sabi nga kanina ni Dr. Irene Bustos, it's not we can, yes, we can. It begins with yes, I can, Okay? Yes, as a CS, CLSU student, okay, CLSU officer or a leader, you, you begin with hashtag yes, I can. Hashtag yes, we can. Hashtag CLSU, yes, uh, youth empowerment series, okay? So kaya nyo, okay? It begins with the you. You say yourself. And when I reviewed again your mission, it says uphold the virtue and principle of outstanding leadership. The you is there. You uphold you uphold the virtue of all the virtues that being instilled on you by your school, by CLSU. Still, it begins with this. I mean, the school giving it to you and the you giving it back to the school and you giving it to the bigger community. And that's the call now. And that's the call that I'm giving you now, inviting you to respond into. And I think that's, that's where I will end my discussion for this morning and for you to respond to that call of leadership of empowered 21st century leaders. Thank you very much and have a great morning. And we're now open for questions. Thank you very much, Sir Christopher. I believe that our youth leaders learn a lot from you, Sir. Ako pa ang pinakanapulot ko doon is that ang leadership ay yung summation ko ng lahat ng mga sinabi niyo na ang leader dapat um, they have critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, literacy, and of course, yung dapat marunong tayo mag-level up. And yung mga iba pong, iba pa pong skill like curiosity, initiative, adaptive, and yun po. And dapat we, we learn how to uphold po yung mga yun. And partner, Commute ka ato partner. Yes, ayan. So thank you so much, Paul Kuya Kid, for such 
uh, ang dami pong nakukuhang insights, ang daming nakukuhang learnings, and personally po ang pinakatumatak sa akin that leaders are lifelong learners, that we should continue to learn anumang aspeto yan sa uh, lahat anumang aspeto at anumang season natin, whether we are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors, or graduating, we should continue to learn, di ba po? So, here we have here uh, the first few questions from our participants. Ang sabi dito, first question, now that we are living in a new normal, how can we lessen the problem of mental health during these trying times? Wow. Interesting question, because I myself, I myself have been through a lot also during this pandemic. So mental health is really something that we should also prioritize as a person. Lagi kung sinasabing first tip. Okay, first tip, rest. Okay, you need the rest first. Okay, rest. When I say rest, okay, R takes for R for restful sleep. Okay, you need you need to have a full sleep. Okay, turn off your phones, turn off your devices. Just have a restful, relaxing sleep. Okay, that's first. The E the, of the rest, E, exercise. Okay, exercise. When I say exercise, you don't have to do it in the four corners of your room. You can go outside, appreciate the beauty of nature, um, explore the E, the exer and explore things that you used to love. That's the, another E. Okay, exercise and explore things you used to love. Because there are things that old passions, for example, you used to draw when you were a kid. You get a get a coloring book, get a crayon. You know, you, the smell of a crayon will give you at least you know good and memorable experiences. Those those things. S is spiritual. You know, spiritual reconditioning. Um, when you say S, um, you just have to pray, connect, go to the Lord, kneel down and pray. Regardless of your religion, you just have to go back to your spiritual core. Because aside from being a physical being, we're also spiritual being. And T. Take time to love yourself, okay? Take time to love yourself, okay? Spend some me time, okay? Baka we're, we, we're spreading ourselves too much, okay? We're spreading ourselves too much. So again, it is always be, be, uh, best to take our me time. Nakita ko si Justin, you're listening now. Okay, ulitin ko. R, again, relaxing sleep. E, exercise, explore the things you used to love. S, is spiritual uh, reconnection, spiritual connection to, to you, who you are as an individual, a spiritual being, and T, take some time to love yourself. So rest. So ayun po, sir. Uh, yun, um, importante talaga yung, ano, yung, yung sinabi nga po ni, ni sir na dapat na kailangan we have a relaxing sleep, exercise, spiritual reconditioning, and yun nga, take some time para mahalin din yung sarili natin at yung ano. So, ayun nga po, ang dami pong nag-burn out ngayon ng mga leaders yes. dahil nga po, especially na gayto yung setup po natin, virtual. Ayun. So, sobrang importante po talaga ng sinabi nyo. Kaya, yes. take notes ko po talaga. <laughs> yes, and in addition, ano, dagdagan ko na lang din, partner, kasi karugtong yun ang sinabi ni Kuya Kit kanina na you, that you should be ano that you are the most important sa lahat nun. kasi the uh, it all begins with us it all begins with you so you should take care of yourself you should take care of your mental health diba so thank you so much sir uh, thank you for for our second okay. question so our second question is being a leader what are the tips on how he or she may handle his or her members in an effective way. Yeah. Ano yan? Um, sabi nga, that it's, it's a common question, no? How he or she may handle his or her members in an effective way. Ngayon, sa panahon din ngayon ng pandemic, first one is always choose to be kind, okay? Laging piliin muna na you have to be kind first, okay? Second, empathy, okay? Empathy. Because you have to check first, anong, where, what shoes is he or she in? You have to first ask, kumusta ka muna? Kumusta yung muna? Huwag mo sabihin, huwag na diretso, oy, kumusta na yung pinapagawa ko sa'yo? Asa na yung, don't, don't begin with that. Okay, don't begin with that. Because you will end up, you will end up, you know, having some arguments. Again, choose be, to be kind and begin with empathy. Uh, wear the shoes that he or she is wearing at the moment. Kumusta yung muna? Kumusta ka na? Kumusta yung family mo? 
uh, how are you right now? How, ano yung pakiramdam mo? Yun yung magkakonect tayo ngayon eh. Yung mental health and asking your members or your co-leaders kung kumusta muna sila. After you establish and asking kung kumusta muna sila, then you can ask, um, kumusta naman? So, game pa ba tayo? Kaya pa ba? Kaya pa ba natin? Kaya pa ba? You, you ask the, ano, the assurance muna kung kaya pa ba? Kaya pa bang maka, magtulungan tayo for this? You need some help? Okay, you offer help. Okay, you offer help when needed. So, ganun. So, laging uh, the kindness, the empathy, the offering of help should always be there. Okay, wala kong acronym ngayon doon, pero it's more of, of you offer, offering help. Okay, that's the okay. Okay, it should be okay. Offering help and kindness para meron lang tayong remembrance. Offering help, the O, and the K is kindness. Yon. Thank you. Yes, uh, grabe po. Ang daming words of wisdom ni Sir, ano, ni Sir Kip mo yun. Sana, <laughs> guys, hindi yun namimiss to. So, take notes, please. You should take take notes, grabe. So, choose to be kind. And that's a very practical and very, ano po, very, ang tawag dito. Yun talaga yung way kung how do we handle our members, di ba po? Actually, hindi lang sa members, kundi sa mga tao talaga sa paligid natin. Right. So for our last, I guess this is our last question for this morning. Our yes, third partner. question po. How can we effectively manage our time in studying and other responsibilities and how to stay productive and inspired in studying? Wow naman. As in, para mga tanong ko rin yan nung estudyante pa ako eh, no? <laughs> Kaya sabi ko sa akin, ang time management is equals to energy management. Kasi I myself is also a physics teacher. So, dapat alam mo kung ano yung energy mo. So, alam yung capacity mo as an individual. So, alam mo kung kailan magpipik yung energy mo. Alam mo rin kailan magda-down yung energy mo. At alam mo kung ilang hours yung kailangan mo para mag-recharge. Kung ang cellphone mo need ng recharging, you also need some recharging. Okay. Again, una hindi tayo robot para gawin lahat ng mga bagay-bagay. And you also need time to recharge. Okay, so time management is equal to, okay, energy management. Okay, when you say energy management, bumalik tayo yung second question. How to say inspired, productive. So, meron kang focus. Ano yung focus mo or yung mga goals mo? Okay, so before, what I, I will share based on my personal experience, for example, Ang goal ko before when I was in college is to graduate with um, graduate with flying colors. Okay, when you say flying colors, you graduate with uh, uh, Latin honors. And I did, and I did. And also the student council president. Uh, I'm also, you know, being an um, active member of Ayala Young Leaders. And these things are going on on side, side by side. So, minsan, a little help, for example, ako, hanggang ngayon, meron akong planner, okay? I got a planner. I got things, for example, what are my roles? What are the hats that I'm wearing? You have to check. Ano yung mga suot-suot mong mga sombrero or hats? Uh, bilang isang estudyante, bilang isang student leader, bilang isang anak, bilang isang kapatid. And you have to list down ano yung mga roles mo dun sa mga bagay-bagay na yon. And minsan, it's very, very helpful to, to have at least, you know, it's good to have a year-long plan. It's also good to have, for example, a monthly plan or quarterly, monthly, and then down to weekly and then to the daily basis. Okay, daily. And you know your your end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. Sabi nga Stephen Covey, it's not from me, ah. it's from Stephen Covey. Begin with the end in mind. Gusto mo mag-graduate with honor. So you have to spend some time studying. You have to spend some time researching. So you wish to receive, for example, the best paper award, for example, that's one. So given that goal, paano mo marireach yung goal mo? So kailangan maano mo, with your task, ilista mo yung mga task mo, ano mga dapat kong gawin? Ano yung mga dapat kong gawin para ma-reach ko yung goal ko? And how much time you devote for those things will dictate kung mamimit mo talaga yung goal mo. For example, ako, hindi ko naman talaga, we can say, um, on my journal, so I don't know if some of you are journaling as well. As 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 a student before, I'm journaling. Okay? Sinulat ko na nung high school ako, I wish to become a diplom diplomat. And now, I'm a diplomat by profession. I'm a foreign service officer for our Department of Foreign Affairs. And... I just perhaps took the exam and blessed to pass it on my first take, and that's it. Once you got the goal, may babalikan ka kasi. Once it's written, it's clear. Okay? So, may babalikan ka with your written goals, babalikan mo yon and priorities mo, and ma-inspire ka. Balikan mo yung iyong bakit. Bakit ka nag-aaral? Para sa aking pamilya. Diba? Balikan mo. Balikan mo yung mga bakit mo. Okay? Pag alam mo yung bakit mo, parang walang nakakapagod na araw sa'yo. 
laging may rason ka para gawin yung mga bagay-bagay. So, ang sagot doon sa un- unang pangalawa, balikan mo yung iyong bakit. Bakit ka bumabangon? Bakit ka nag-aaral? And for sure, you will have the answer for your questions as well. And good to have something written. Thank you. Nakatulong ba? <laughs> yes, yes po sir. Sobrang nakatulong po. Uh. And in, yes, in addition po sa sinabi ni Sir, ano, ni Sir Kit, sa pag, dapat balikan natin yung bakit natin. And naalala yeah. ko po that one time, may inattendant po kami conference, ang sabi po sa amin doon, knowing your why's will eventually lead you to do your how's. Yes. So kapag alam mo kung bakit mo ginagawa yun, alam mo kung paano mo na siya gagawin, paano mm-hmm. mo na siya i-handle. And thank you so much po. And partner? Yes, for... So ayun, partner. My... So yung akin naman, uh, kasi parang hindi enough para sa atin yung, uh, I mean, kapag ginawa na, kapag may time management tayo, sometimes napipressure din tayo. And mm-hmm. ayun nga, kapag napipressure tayo, kailangan natin bumalik lang sa reason kung bakit tayo, uh, bakit natin ginagawa ang isang bagay. So yun lang. Yun yung pinakamahalaga yes. talaga. Yes, and speaking of napipressure, ano, meron po tayong follow-up question dito. Ang sabi po, what if you are the leader and you are under pressure? Ano po ang dapat gawin? Okay, babalikan ko lang din pagka pressure ka, ang laging sabi natin, there should be always grace under pressure. Okay, since ako, I'm a person who love ac- who love uh, who loves acronyms. So I think grace ko. First, generosity. You're generous enough to provide your your piece of thoughts, your your opinion on the matter. Okay? Wala kang hinatag, wala kang ano, when you are being pressured, you're generous enough. So, you merong generosity of heart, okay, to help. Okay, that's one. Kahit pressure ka na, you still have generous to be to of help. Second, responsive ka to the need. So, alam mo kung ano yung need at aware ka kung ano yung pangangailangan at that very, very moment. Okay? A, amicable. Yung pagiging friendly, kailangan ma-meet mo lagi, maano mo lagi yan. Dapat ma-maintain mo lagi yan. And C, um, for example, the, co- the collaboration. Kasi minsan, when you're pressured, hindi mo kayang salilinin. Lahat minsan, make, you need someone's el- someone's el- else's help. Okay? So you need to op- be open for co- op- uh, cooperation or collaboration. Still, admit it. If you don't, if you can't, just admit it that you can you need help. Okay? And E, empathy. Okay? Empathic. So laging ang ating response at the end, yung ating pinakatuldok lagi, you have done it empathically. So parang ginawa mo siya laging galing sa puso at naramdaman mo yung pangangailangan. So again, with generosity, responsive, amicable, okay, uh, collaborative, and with empathy. So that's grace under pressure. Yes. Uh, thank you so much po. Thank you so much, Kuya Kit, for that uh, wonderful answer, Grace. Grabe. Ang dami, no? Sana hindi to nami-miss ng ating mga viewers and participants this morning. And thank you so much po for feeling ko marami rin sa atin dito ang na-refresh this morning with Kuya Kit's words of wisdom. And uh, yes, partner, ipapropo, no? So, Moving on to the awarding of certificate. Uh, ay, partner, may mga pahabol pa ba tayong question? Oh, wala na, partner. Ah, wala na. Okay, okay so, na. Yes. Okay, um, pwede na tayong mag-proceed sa awarding po of our certificate. Moving on to the awarding of certificate, allow me to read the certifi- certificate citations. Certificate of appreciation is given to Mr. Christopher P. Castillo, for sharing his time and expertise as the resource speaker of, of the topic, a 21st century youth leader, lessons and opportunities in a pan- pandemic striking and vir- virtual led world as part of the first CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes We Can, held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on September 25, 2021. Signed, Executive President Ms. of Veterinary Circle 410, Ms. Daisy Acuna, and Dr. Froilan Bernard Matias, the advisor of the Veterinary Circle 410. Yes, thank you so much, Sir Keith. And we hope to see you again soon, and we hope to learn from you again. So, 
to our participants naman po in Zoom, may we request our viewers to please open your cameras for a photo op with Kuya Kit. And we have a facilitator on Zoom who will take the photo. So, okay na po ba? Okay na po ba? So, on the count of three, please show us your sweetest smile in three, two, one. Smile! Again, sige, isa pa po. Yung, naki, yung ngiting nakita si Crush. <laughs> in three... Ngiting nakapasa. Oo, in three, two, one. There we go. Maraming salamat po. Again, thank you, Sir Christopher Castillo. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure having you as our CLSU Yes We Can first presenter. Salamat po. Thank you so much po. And to our dear participants, may we encourage you to post or tweet your takeaways with the hashtags hashtag CLS Youth Empowerment Series and hashtag Yes We Can. And make sure that the post or tweet is in public privacy settings so that our coordinators or facilitators can easily see your post. Grabe, ang dami natin natutunan this morning. Ang daming binigay na words of wisdom ni Kuya Kit. So, I'm sure marami tayong mapopost, marami tayong masishare na takeaways. Yes. And, di ba, partner? Yes. And from there, from our post, we will choose one winner per topic. Before we move on to our second resource speaker, as mentioned earlier, we emailed a slide link to those who registered, where you can answer the question for topic two, what barrier do you usually encounter when communicating digitally? We urge those who have not yet responded to do so right now. You may scan the QR code on the, on the screen or visit slido.com and enter the code 323290 or check the chat box for the link. You may submit numerous responses by just typing in your one word answer. Yes, dating gawe, diba? And for so partner, now, tignan natin yes. kung ano yung pinaka maraming word. Yes, at, for now, here's the summary of our second question. We have here. Amen unstable connection, and mis in ah, misinterpretation. Yes, yan ang pinakamalaki. And I believe yan din ang pinakamaraming votes, di ba? And sobrang relatable yan, di ba? Ang hirap, yes. ang hirap makahanap ng stable connection yun. Tsaka dahil, uh, ang tawag dito, dahil we communicate digitally, minsan or madalas nangyayari din ang misinterpretation, di ba? Yes. Tsaka, naka, parang ngayon, nakadepend tayo ngayon sa internet kasi nakakapag-communicate lang tayo. Like, ngayon, sa conference natin, naka-base talaga siya sa parang internet connection natin. Yes. Sa so, signal, ganyan. Tapos, mm. meron pang background noise. Yung sasabay sa'yo yung mga aso nyo. Aso ng kapitbahay, kapit mga bahay. manok ng tatay. Yung mga manok. <laughs> Oo, diba? At bukod pa doon, Minsan mahirap din makakuha ng mat- mabilis na response from our ano sa mga kausap natin uh, for specific time, right? So, ang daming barriers, 'di ba? Ang daming nakaka ano, ang daming nakaka-relate dito and tayo din mismo, 'di ba, partner? We relate to this uh, barrier so much na experience din natin. Yes, partner. And I Ayan, sige, habang, habang nagsasagot din sila, siguro mag-move on na tayo. Time, oras na para mag-move on, partner. So, partner, all right. Um, let me now introduce our second speaker this morning. She is an instructor at the Department of Communication and Development Studies, College of Arts and Social Sciences in Central Luzon State University. 
She studied Bachelor of Science in Development Communication at CLSU. Currently, she is pursuing her master's degree in communication major in applied media studies at De La Salle University. She handles courses offering on communication, including purposive communication, development communication, and multimedia writing. Yes, and moreover, she is the executive secretary of the office for the office of the vice president for administration. And she serves as assistant editor of CLSU International Journal for Education and Development Studies. Her research interests include culture and communication, digital and social network studies, gender and communication, and global and comparative communication. To our dear viewers and audience, again, please feel free to ask your questions and you may enter your questions in the chat box so, me, so we may raise them during the Q&A portion. So without further ado, everyone, to discuss to us the interfaces, digital written communication, here is Ma'am Linnell M. Alejandro. Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Mom so, Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Mitzi. Good morning, <clears throat> Justin. Excuse me for that. <laughs> so thank you so much for the invitation to be here. I am glad to be with you this morning. And to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us despite your heavy workload dahil end of the term. So diba na isingit nyo pa to? Thank you for saying yes to this uh, opportunity to learn and invitation to learn as well. So thank you so much for that. So kanina habang nakikinig ako kay Sir Kit, ay, ay, kay Kuya Kit or kay Sir Christopher, uh, madami akong natutunan actually dahil that's the beauty of webinars. Even if you are the speaker, you get to learn from the other speakers as well. And I'm very thankful for that. And that's the beauty of life, diba? You get to learn every day. Even even those the things na akala mo, alam mo na, you have to be reminded of it every single day. And same is true with communication. It is something that we do every day, pero we tend to forget the most basic things about it. Kasi we do it every day para nagiging kumpiyansa na, na tayo. Now we know how to do it. We know how to communicate properly. And actually, yung um, talk ni uh, Kuya Tito and Sir Christopher kanina is a good prelude and a good anchor for my talk today. Kasi uh, he mentioned earlier that communication or being a good communicator is one of the core competencies of being uh, an effective leader. And it is true. Um, based on sa mga slide quest, uh, answer nyo kanina, it seems like meron kayong mga nagiging communication barriers and it is only normal in the communication process. Okay, some of it um, includes unstable connection. It is something na um, has something to do with infrastructures. It, it is something that we cannot really answer in this specific presentation. But some of your um, concerns on barriers, I believe can be answered during my presentation. So I have here a short presentation, but it is more of a visual guide para lang mag-guide kayo on where the presentation is going. So I have here a presentation. I'll just share it in a while. Okay, so here. So this talk regarding communication will be divided um, among uh, between me and DJ Bad. So for my um, talk, I will focus on written communication in digital sphere. And just a quick rundown on my presentation here, how it will go. So first, um, we will um, learn the digital environment that um, we're communicating in and then the communication participants. And lastly, we will dwell um, deeply on the message. And just a, just a disclaimer for the purpose of this presentation, we will focus more on emails because diba, right now, uh, especially in CLS, you were in asynchronous and nagiging learning, we communicate mostly through emails. And um, it is something now we have to be reminded of. Okay, so in every communication um, process, 
the environment of it is very important kasi it is the context na ginagalawan ng ating um ng ating communication process now na nagkaroon ng migration from in-person communication to digital communication bigla tayo nang dibago biglang marami bigla parang bigla tayo na windang diba so digital communication first and foremost i-define muna natin so digital communication refers to communication mediated by technologies so it is not limited um hindi lang siya limited by text but it can also be um spoken communication so some of the examples ng digital communication for quick reference lang it may be through ms sms or text as we call it here in the philippines phone calls facebook posts tweets blogs video blogs podcasts these are kinds of um digital communication and as you can see these are something na kinalakhan na natin na lagi na natin ginagawa so we have this confidence na we know what we're doing kasi lagi natin ginagawa but still there are some pitfalls okay so uh, malaki ang pinagkaiba ng digital communication sa in-person communication first and foremost during in-person communication almost 90% ng communication process na yun ay nagre-rely tayo sa non-verbal cues or non-verbal language but it is something na tinanggal na sa atin dito sa um, written digital communication di ba so we have to rely solely on the content of the material na sinesend or nare-receive natin so ganun yun nangyari so despite that Despite the differences of in-person communication and this digital communication, I would like you to always remember that every action, your virtual action, has real-life consequences. Okay, and this will lead us to the next um, part of our presentation: the communication participants. Dahil ang um, digital, this digital platform gives us the power of sometimes anonymity. Nagkakaroon tayo ng um, parang assumed power. Nagkakaroon tayo ng assumed liberty. And sometimes we forget that um, behind all of this communication process is the humanity itself. So I would, I would like uh, to remind everyone that despite na virtual communication ang meron tayo, each of the participants is still human. So, send messages and receive messages like a human being. So, uh, lagi, nabanggit din yun ni Circuit kanina, di ba? That it, one of the core competencies na isang effective leader is uh, to have that humanity in you. So yung hostility, yung sarcasm, yung, yung mga negative um, feelings na ganyan, uh, i-consider din natin before transmitting sa ibang uh, sa ating receiver kasi at the end of the day pareho kayong tao despite virtual yung communication, you feel things based on uh, the materials na yon. Okay. Next Dito na tayo mag, uh, mag-uusap ng ma- medyo matagal-tagal regarding the message. Okay? Dahil nga iba na yung dahil nga iba na yung konteksto ng ating uh, communication process from in-person communication, much of the communication process ngayon ay nagre-rely na doon sa mismo message me mismo. And um, much of the things that you've mentioned kanina has something to do with the message. So nabanggit kanina doon na sa slido answers di ba na meron kayong uh, problem parang isa, one of the fears sa isang communication process is yung misinterpretation yung identity barrier yung fear yung emotional barrier among other things and these are these things ay masusolusyonan on how you construct your message and how you send your message so first I would like to start on the most basic thing. In order for you to maximize the digital potential, first, tignan mo muna how you present yourself. Diba? Begin sa sarili mo. Begin sa, sa, sa sender. Check your email address. Baka ang nagagamit mo pang email address, yung email address na ginamit mo to sign up for Tetris Battle or to sign up for Y8 Games or other um 
other gaming website na medyo face out na ngayon. So, paki-check muna. Um, most likely, meron na kayong mga institutional emails. So, yun ang mga gam- yun ang gamitin nyo sa inyong mga sa inyong mga communication when it comes sa school communication kasi madami ring advantages di ba ang isang educational mail so take take that opportunity to maximize it and kalimutan niyo na muna yung mga rocket mail at mga yahoo mail niyo na medyo may cringy na address ayan so i-check niyo na ngayon baka mayroon pa kayong mga ganitong email address next is that we have to reduce the email burden. Dahil nga tayo, lalo na sa CLSU, di ba, asynchronous, most of our communication process ay na, na, na ginagawa natin through email. And imagine if every day, kung gano'ng karami yung natatanggap nating email. Kung merong Zoom patig, meron din tayong tinatama, tinatawag na email patig. Yung tipong parang ayaw mo nabuksan yung email mo kasi feeling mo, um, it will overwhelm you again. Parang hindi na matapos-tapos yung notification, yung emails, di ba? You have that feeling, di ba, as a receiver. And sometimes, para ma-mend natin yung email fatigue na yun, we have to be considerate of the receiver pag tayo na yung nagsisend ng message. So we can do it by making our messages concise and by, make, by, by clearly stating our purpose. So, Ito, parang basic thing lang siya, yung paglalagay ng subject line, but it is one of uh, one of the few things na laging nakakalimutan ng estudyante. And this is based on my experience. So, mis- minsan siguro, nagiging sobrang absorbed sila on typing the body of their message on how they will sound. Minsan nakakalimutan na nila yung subject line. Eh, itong subject line, very important for the receiver of the message to know the context and to know, of course, the subject of what you're talking about. To give them some sort of idea. Kasi di ba, imagine receiving a message na walang subject. You don't know what awaits you pag kinlik mo yung email na yun. Imagine the anxiety, di ba? Same is true kapag nakareceive ka ng chat from your um friend or from your family member na parang ano lang, tatawagin lang yung pangalan mo, or hoy, ganun, or we need to talk. Yung parang ganun lang, walang context, walang subject. Imagine the anxiety and burden on the part of the receiver. So, if you can, please do not forget to put subject line and to make it as concise as possible. Next, like I've said, madaming nare-receive na email tayo ngayon dahil talagang true email lagi tayo ngayon. So, Imagine receiving around 20 emails per day and then among those emails, maraming hindi nagpakilala, madaming hindi hindi sinabi yung pangalan nila. If, even though nandun na sa email address, di ba? Still, hindi mo alam kung ano yung course, hindi mo alam kung ano yung year-end section and how are you related. So, another burden yon sa receiver na message. So, the first thing that you have to do is to I to... Um, introduce yourself, make yourself known. So, ngayon, sa, if that is your first time messaging that person, you can introduce yourself by putting the introduction on the, in the body of the email itself. Pero kung recurring naman na, pwede nang mag yung sender doon sa iyong signature line. So, um, ito din, i-maximize nyo rin yung feature ng email, yung paglalagay ng signature line. Para if ever man na makalimutan nyo, i-introduce yung sarili nyo dun sa body ng email, makikita pa rin ng receiver yung pertinent information regarding you dun sa signature line. So that hindi na rin paulit-ulit na nagpapakilala ka. ba Para na rin less burden on your part and less taxing na rin sa part ng iyong receiver. Next is that you have to account for tone. Uh, kanina, nakita ko dun sa mga barriers na, na, na nakukuha nyo kanina is yung misinterpretation. Natatakot kayo sa misinterpretation when it comes to digital communication. And that is true, di ba? Dahil nga nang nasabi ko, uh, during written digital communication, tinanggal na talaga sa atin yung nonverbal cues. Hindi na tayo makakapag-rely doon. So we have to solely rely on the message. So, again, the reader cannot see your face, they cannot hear the tone of your voice. So, 
recommend that you have uh, to use words na comfortable ka, you have to choose words carefully and thoughtfully. Kasi nga, wala na yung body language. Eh. So you have to maximize what's present dun sa communication process na yun. Okay. Now that we have um, talked about the things na we have to be mindful of, these are the some of the things naman yung fitful ng isang um, digital written communication process. Okay. Next, I, I want you to um, I want you to take note of this. Pag nagsusulat kayo ng email, wag nyo na muna unahin na ilagay kung yung to or yung recipients nung uh, email nyo para hindi kayo magkamali na masend agad na hindi nyo pa na-proofread or hindi nyo pa uh, natatapos i-type. Kasi di ba minsan, um, masyado tayong anxious to send it immediately. Minsan hindi na pala natin na proofread hindi na pala natin nakikita kung complete attachment, hindi na, na natin, hindi na natin nakikita yung typographical errors and writing mechanics errors. So, yan ang isa sa mga tip na I find very useful. Hindi mo na ilalagay yung email address ng pagsisenten or yung recipient. Para if every man mag-slip yung finger mo at mapindot mo yung send, hindi masisend kasi wala pa yung recipient. So that you have, you will be reminded to proofread your work uh, again and to, to check the nuances. And then, again, going back to what I said earlier, yung virtual communication also has um, real-life consequences. So once you've sent your email, I want you to be reminded na sometimes it is not always, it is not the recipient lang ang nakakakita nun. Minsan may mga ibang tao din na makakabasa nun. So you have to make your email presentable if ever man na may iba ding makakita nung email na yun. Next is that you have to be considerate. This is another problem na nakita ko doon sa Slido uh, sa Slido presentation kanina yung availability and time di ba so yan ang isa sa mga disadvantages na kinakaharap natin ngayon during this um, digital communication kasi parang na blur na yung line between studying and personal life and working so parang nagkahalo-halo na yon and that's the reason why we tend to be overwhelmed Kasi before, di ba, kapag nag, nung nag-aaral tayo face-to-face, -face, once na na-dismiss na tayo sa class, kahit pa pa na nagkakaroon ng disconnect between the school premise and your personal life. But now that we're in this kind of setup, parang nabiblur na yung line. And we have to be also considerate of that. We have also to, we also have to consider that, di ba? So, you have to send your messages kapag yung alam mong available yung tao. So, that is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. lang din. Yung parang regular work hours din. Para naman hindi sila ma-burden. Baka patulog na yung tao tapos na-receive yung message mo. Magugulanta ngayon. Tapos baka maratel pa siya. So, ang problema naman, what if yun lang yung available time mo? What if ang available time mo lang is uh, midnight to send the emails? Dahil nga, let's say for example... Uh, dun ka lang nagkaroon ng signal, dun ka lang nagkaroon ng time, what you can do is schedule the email instead. I-schedule mo na lang yung email para ma-receive pa din ng recipient uh, kahit na hindi ka na-available during that time. ba? So parang maging, by that, naging considerate ka sa kanya, iisipin din niya the next time na mag-send siya ng message sa'yo, magiging considerate na rin siya sa'yo. So hopefully, hopefully, ganun ang mangyari. Next, Yan. Ito, isa sa mga problema talaga. Don't reply to all unless your response is directed to the group. Di ba madaming mga emails wherein hindi lang ikaw yung receiver. Maraming mga nakasisi or maraming nakatu. Ngayon, ang problema minsan, nagre-reply to all kahit na ang sasabihin lang naman ay this is to acknowledge receipt of this email. Pag nagreply to all ka kasi, maa-alert lahat nung lahat nung receiver ng message na yon. And imagine kung yung isang email na naka sa yo or nakasisi sa yo ay merong 100 na receiver. And then 80 of those people nagreply to all. 
just imagine yung clutter doon sa iyong inbox, di ba? Punong-puno yun for sure. And imagine yung yung anxiety every time nagpiping yung email mo. You think na there's something wrong na nangyayari or emergency. Noon pala, nag, nag-acknowledge silang pala ng receipt nung isang group email na natanggap mo. So, again, don't reply to all if it's not meant for the whole group. Kung mag acknowledge ka lang naman or for the sender itself lang naman, you may opt to uh, just reply and don't reply to all. Next, ayan, don't forward email without permission ng sender. Yan. So, minsan kasi, we tend to get excited ganyan or parang nagmamadali tayo na ipinu-forward nila natin uh, kung kanino yung email na natatanggap natin for their reference or for their action, ganun. But you also have to alert the sender na isi-send mo yun na isi-send mo sa iba, may ibang makakabasa ng message na yun. Next, ayan. Ito yung isa pa sa mga um, communication barrier na sinabi nyo kanina. Yung um, emotional and then yung misinterpretation. Diba? Wala, na, wala kasi talagang visual cues. Hindi, hindi natin maririnig yung vocal tone, walang facial expression, wala, itong, wala yung mga telltale body signs. Diba? Hindi natin makikita yung body language. So, hin- mahirap i-assess kung yung statement na sinasabi mo is um, made in good faith or kung joke ba to, sarcasm, or talagang rude lang talaga yung uh, nag-send ng message na yon. So, as much as possible, if you are not sure doon sa, if you are not sure sa humor, kung anong klaseng humor ang meron ng receiver na yon, um, maybe leave the humor out of that message. Kasi ang golden rule nga ng communication is to always, always know your audience. You have to know kung ano yung personality ng audience na yun or kung ano yung, kung ano yung language na comfortable siya and all. So, kung hindi naman kayo close or hindi mo naman alam kung anong klaseng humor ang meron siya, maybe, um, leave mo na yung humor, yung knock-knock jokes mo, dun mo na lang isend sa GC nyo, baka mas matawa sila. Ganon. So, yun, leave the humor out of that message if you are not sure. Next, yan, ito pa. Don't assume. Don't assume na alam na agad ng uh, receiver mo kung ano yung sinasabi mo. You have to contextualize your message. So, you can do it by um, making a, a, a short paragraph lang kung ba't ka nag, uh, kung ba't mo siya mini-message or kung para sa yung message mo na yun. But don't make it too long. Huwag naman yung parang uh, gumawa ka na ng sobrang habang uh, sobrang habang introduction na parang yung mga messages sa Facebook pag mansari yung sobrang haba tapos may mga emoji pa as period. So, huwag naman ganang kahaba. Just a brief and short um contextualization of the subject matter is all right para lang hindi hindi nangangapa yung receiver mo kung what you're talking about so you can do it by again including the subject and putting references to previous emails or conversations that you've had so yun yung mga bagay na maaari yung tignan so in a communication process mahalaga na to know your audience and also to know the context of that um, communication process. So, be mindful of that. Minsan naman, minsan naman, gusto natin i-contextualize lahat ng bagay that we tend to forget to put kung ano ba talaga intention natin doon sa message na yun. Okay, so, baka mamaya sobrang haba na nung pag-explain mo kung, ba't ka nag, kung bakit ka nag- uh, kung bakit mo siya in email to the point na nakalimutan mo na yung mismong request mo or yung mismong tanong mo. Nangyayari yun sa, sa mga estudyante and uh, it's understandable kasi minsan nagkakaroon din ng emotional pressure sa mga estudyante kapag nag email sa mga teacher, di ba? Imagine yung, yung anxiety pag nagka-craft ka ng message. Mahirap. So, again... Uh, I would like you, I would like you to be reminded na yung request nyo or yung mismong purpose ng message nyo, ilagay nyo on top of uh, the email para hindi nyo din nakakalimutan. And yung contextualization of your message kahit maikli lang. Okay. And we're reaching the end of my presentation. 
Okay? Babalik at babalik tayo dun sa sinabi ko kanina that digital communication may be virtual, pero yung consequences nito are just as real. Diba? So, babalik din tayo dun sa sagot kanina dun sa Slido question. Diba? I, slido answer. Sabi dito, nagkakaroon daw ng identity barrier, nagkaka, natatakot sila sa mga poser during a digital communication during a digital communication process. So, again, even if you are protected by the anonymity, diba? Yung real life consequences nito are just as real to you as a sender and to your receiver. So in everything that you send in every and everything that you post, make sure that you can face its consequences and make sure to be mindful of the humanity of uh, the person na makakabasa nun or makaka-receive nun. Okay, so I hope you've learned something from this presentation and I am looking forward to your questions later on. Thank you. Hi, Mitzi, I think you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's another that's another barrier. <laughs> yes, po. So uh, thank you, Ma'am Linel. Sabi niyo nga po, uh, pinaka natutunan, tumatak naman or natutunan ko sa session na ito ay we should be mindful sa lahat ng ginagawa natin, mapa-virtual or real life man yung mga situations or yung mga ginagawa natin. Think before you click, ika nga po nila, di ba? And thank you for the tips, the do's and don'ts, Ma'am Ma Linel. And very relevant po yung mga shinare nyo. And I believe lahat po ng mga sinabi nyo ay makakatulong sa mga students especially nasa new normal po tayo ngayon. And for our dear participants, just type in your questions at in comment section sa Zoom and we'll uh, have them answered later. So we'll be back, okay? Thank you po. Okay, to further edu educate us about the topic, here is our third speaker. She is a graduate of Bachelor of Arts in Development Communication in 2012. Before her graduation, she was the first intern and volunteer radio host in Radio CLSU, handling various developmental and entertainment programs with different faculty members and and students vol student volunteer host. Two years after working in different companies, she came back to Radio CLSU in 2014, this time as full-time radio broadcaster, which made her more exposed to other radio programs types like in news and current affairs and human interest programs. Yes, at present, she is handling more than five radio programs in the radio station, each with different program types and audience to cater. She is currently taking her master's degree in development communication at the University of the Philippines Open University. And ladies and gents, here is Ma'am Maria Bernadette M. Pagio, our very own DJ Bads. Good morning, DJ Bads. So, good morning, uh, Mitzi and Justin. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Bagamat medyo na pressure ako kasi yung, yung 2012 and 2014, so somehow it reveals my age. But regardless of that, still, I want to thank the both of you for that wonderful introduction. And of course, good morning po sa ating mga viewers, especially sa ating mga estudyante at uh, sa mga moms and sirs din na kasama din natin via Zoom, I understand that maybe some of them ay mga kasama ko rin as radio host sa Radio CLSU. So, uh, with that also, I want to thank Veterinary Circle for 10 uh, for this wonderful opportunity na ma-share sa inyo yung aking experiences and learnings as a radio host sa Radio CLSU. So, uh, 
actually, uh, ngayong pandemic kasi I must say na yung mga seminars, mga workshops, iba pang mga programs na usually ginagawa natin face-to-face, isa sa mga na-challenge yan ngayong panahon ng pandemic. Of course, bagamat... Uh, We are always thankful, of course, that despite of this, marami ng mga platform para pagpatuloy pa rin itong mga seminars na ito like this uh, Youth Empowerment Series. Siyempre, hindi pa rin mawawala yung mga iba't ibang mga challenges. And kagaya nga dun sa slide kanina, so uh, nakita nga natin na yung unstable connection at saka yung misinterpretation ay uh, isa sa mga nakikita natin barriers or maybe most of us na encounter na natin itong mga barriers sa to itong mga challenges sa to and uh, just to share even sa radio CLS so yung unstable connection talagang sobrang naaapektuhan niya yung program flow namin sa station but still sabi nga natin despite the challenges the show must go on ayan bukod diyan may mga technical difficulties and even lack of interaction yung physical interaction natin sa ating mga audience. Ayan, di ba? Bagamat syempre, alam natin na may nanonood, may viewers tayo, nakikita natin with different platforms. Ilan yung nakikinig, ilan yung nakatutok. But of course, iba pa rin kapag ka nakikita natin mismo yung facial expressions, yung reactions mismo sa ating mga audiences. But despite of that, kahit na anong mangyari, sabi ko nga, the show must go on. Kaya, We have to make sure that every virtual event na mabibigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na maging host, may it be this will be your first time, or masasabi natin, veterano ka na especially sa mga uh, physical hosting o ito yung face-to-face setups natin, kailangan patuloy pa rin natin mapagbuti yung ating mga gagawin as host. And I must say, and I believe din kasi na isa sa mga reasons kung bakit yung mga viewers natin, mga participants natin, especially sa mga webinars, kagaya nitong activity natin, isa sa mga reasons kung bakit uh, patuloy pa rin sumusubaybay or uh, nakastay yung mga audience natin, malaking bagay yung presensya ng mga hosts kasi natin. So with that, uh, allow me to share my presentation. So uh, before that, ang ilan sa aking mga i-discuss uh, this morning is that first, yung role natin bilang host. Another one, yung mga some of the qualities that we need to develop para po maging outstanding and effective host tayo, if I may add. And of course, some hosting tips before, during, and after an event or an activity. Yan. So next slide, please. Yan. So first, your role as a host. So next, please. Ayan. So basically, you will serve as the facilitator of an event. So kung bagabagamat merong mga organizers, may mga tao sa likod ng mga iba't ibang mga webinars, mga... Uh, virtual activities and events na meron tayo, still, kapag uh, nandun na tayo sa program proper, tayo na yung magsisilbing frontliner, kumbaga, sa bawat event. Tayo yung magiging representative ng mga iba't ibang mga programs na yon. So with that, uh, it also means that uh, bilang tayo yung frontliners, tayo yung nagsiset ng tone and atmosphere of the event. So despite the challenge, syempre na uh, virtual yung setup natin, sabi ko nga kanina, may lack of interaction, physical interaction with the audience, but still we have to make sure na nandun pa rin yung goal and objective ng particular event. And of course, it's out, it's in our hands kung paano natin maipaparamdam yon especially sa pamamagitan ng ating uh, facial expressions and of course yung ating boses. Kasi yun lang yung masasabi nating puhunan, especially with the new normal setups natin pagdating sa mga events and activity. Of course, uh, eto regardless to uh, may it be a face-to-face or a virtual activity, you are in charge sa smooth transition ng program flow. So, nasa mga kamay mo kung paano tatakbo yung event or yung activity na yun. Next. And of course, beside uh, making sure na yung uh, app, pabalik naman please. Ayun. 
Thank you for that. Ayun, so bukod sa tayo yung in charge to make sure na maging maayos yung program flow ng isang event or ng isang activity, of course, tayo din po ang magpapakilala sa key persons in the event, like yung mga speakers natin. So with that, tayo din kasi yung merong obligation na iparamdam sa audience natin bukod sa ipaalam, syempre, sino yung mga speakers, sino yung mga dapat abangan sa event na yun, kailangan na rin nating bigyan ng reason para ma-excite yung ating mga audience. And of course, tayo yung magiging uh, uh, middleman, kumbaga, from our speaker to our audience. So next slide, please. Ayan. So now that we know some of the roles ng uh, uh, isang uh, host, so ito naman yung ilan sa mga qualities that we need to develop para maging outstanding. And sabi ko, if I may add, effective host. So first, being well prepared. So syempre, kahit na tayo ay, uh, kumbaga, nagkikita-kita na lamang tayo virtually at ito man ipe-perform mo bilang isang uh, host sa isang virtual event, hindi ka man makapag-power dress, makapag-power makeup, which is, uh, I guess, some of the hosts, sobrang namimiss na rin yung mga ganong uh, mga galawan, mga ganong paandar, sabi nga. Of course, hindi lang ito nangangahulugan na kailangan physically appealing tayo. Ayan. So actually, kami sa Radio CLS, one of the things na sinasabi din sa amin ng aming former station manager and our currently vice president for administration, Dr. Danny Vargas, kailangan meron tayong pleasing personality. And that means that uh, bukod sa syempre, ikaw ay uh, maayos ang pananamit, maayos ang iyong itsura, maayos mong i-present yung sarili mo physically kasi syempre, uh, kailangan pa rin ng face value, ng maayos na physical presentation sa atin kapag nag-host tayo. Hindi lang doon nagtatapos itong being well prepared na part na ito ng isang outstanding host. So kailangan mentally, emotionally, and spiritually na ko kailangan din na kahit pa paano ipinagpa-pray over natin kung bagay yung activity na just for the sake na maging successful yung ating program. But of course, kailangan na ma-perform natin, ma-make sure natin na ma-meet natin yung goals and objectives ng event na yun. So second is good communication skills. So hindi lamang po ito nangangahulugan na tayo po ay magaling tsumika, magaling dumaldal. But of course, Sabi ko nga kanina, tayo yung frontliner ng mga activities na ito, especially virtual na ang most of our setups. So, kailangan na uh, meron kang uh, kahit pa paano, ma-connect mo sa pamamagitan ng iyong facial expression, sa iyong boses, yung sarili mo sa iyong mga audience. Para syempre, at the end of the day, hindi tayo maiwan ng ating mga audience. Third is the ability to follow command over language. Actually, ito, mas applicable ito kapag face-to-face -face ang ating uh, uh, setup, yung mga activities natin and events, kasi syempre hindi maiiwasan na mayroong mga unexpected changes. ba? Mga uh, short notices na mga ganaps ng mga, host, uh, ng mga host speakers rather, or kung sino man yung mga organizers, or iba pang mga... Uh, changes, mga kailangan i-adjust. So, syempre, di natin pwedeng sabihin sa ating mga audience na okay, guys, uh, medyo maghintay lang po tayo kasi may ganitong pangyayari. Hindi tayo po pwedeng maging ganon at hindi po pwede na yung audience natin ang mag adjust sa atin. Syempre, with the uh, with the platforms that we are having, even sa physical events naman, di ba, kapag medyo naglalag na, medyo matagal na yung uh, kumbaga, wala pang nangyayari, kumbaga, Sa radio term, tinatawag namin ito na dead air, as in wala kang maririnig, walang ganap. The tendency is that lalayasan ka. So with that, kailangan na kumbaga medyo may kambatan between the organizers and you as a host para alam mo kung paano mo i-improvise or kung ano man diskarte yung pwede mong gawin para maipagpatuloy pa rin yung isang event or activity. Next. Ayan, time conscious. So, hindi lang ito tumutukoy. Actually, sa running time ng, uh, say for example, ng one speaker to another or uh, yung mismong expected na time kung ano oras magsisimula at magtatapos yung programa. But of course, bilang isang host, kailangan uh, hindi ka lang on time. Ayan na, hindi ka lang on time. Kailangan you should be early. 
doon sa oras ng event. Kasi marami pang pwedeng mangyari actually. Uh, a few minutes siguro, say for example, 15 to 20 minutes before the event proper, marami ka pang pwedeng magawa. You can do some uh, final dry runs, for example, technical setups, kung may mga clarifications pa, last minute reminders from the organizers or mga speakers or kung sino man yung mga nasa likod ng mga organizers. So, makakatulong to para hindi ka rin maratel. Yan, next. Ayan, ability to improvise. So, medyo relate siya doon sa ating third quality, which is the ability to follow command over language. So, kailangan uh, mahalaga na makadiskarte tayo kaagad kung papaano natin masisigurado that at the end of the day, despite the uh, changes, mga siguro mga emergencies na syempre hindi natin maiwasan, tuloy-tuloy pa rin at maayos pa rin yung transition from one part of the program to another. Next. Ayan, energetic. Nako. Itong energetic, I believe, and in my experience, hindi, na, hindi lang ito basta-basta tumutukoy sa kailangan mataas agad yung energy mo. So it means that being energetic here is not just to make sure na mataas yung energy mo sa audience. Kasi syempre, kailangan pa rin natin maidepende yung uh, energy levels natin sa kung ano yung hinihingi na goal or objective ng isang event. Kasi ang hirap naman na halimbawa, very formal yung, ano, yung bawa, seminar workshop on a particular formal subject or topic. Hindi all the time ine-expect na very hype yung energy mo, yung talaga na mga uh, ang tendency kapag kaganon kasi, they will find it very irritating. And yet, Hindi naman po pwede na sobrang baba naman ang energy mo na talaga naman kumbaga sa cellphone, 15% na lang yung, yung uh, battery. So kailangan, kumbaga yung pagiging energetic as a host, nakadepende pa rin ito sa kung ano pangangailangan sa particular event or activity na yun. Pero syempre, iba pa rin kasi kapag ka medyo, ha, medyo mataas yung energy natin kasi... Uh, with the setup that we are having, kailangan nating makuha yung attention ng ating mga audience. Next. Ayan, good listener. Actually, isinay share ko sa mga naging student volunteers namin, uh, sa mga kapwa ko broadcasters, and even sa mga uh, faculty hosts na nakasama at nakakasama pa rin namin sa Radio CLS. Yun na one way para maging effective host tayo is that we put ourselves on the perspective of being a listener. So kung ikaw ay makikinig sa par sa sa radyo, sige, ipasok na natin doon sa context ng radyo. Ano ba yung mga bagay na gusto mong mapakinggan? Ano yung mga bagay na gusto mong mga sabihin natin mga punchlines ng mga hosts? Ano yung mga bagay na medyo irritable kang pakinggan bilang isang host, 'di ba? So yun. Uh, kung ano kasi basically yung ayaw at gusto natin na naririnig especially sa iba pang mga events or activities or programs, most probably yun din yung ayaw na mapakinggan at gustong mapakinggan at the same time ng ating audience. So malaking bagay na ilalagay natin yung sarili natin bilang isang tagapakinig din. Kasi after all, bago naman tayo naging host, naging tagapakinig din tayo. Kung baga naging critic din tayo ng iba pang mga events and activities. Next slide, please. Ayan, so now that uh, I gave you some of the qualities na kailangan para maging outstanding and effective host, allow me to share some hosting tips. So, sabi ko nga kanina, before, during, and after an event or activity yung ibabahagi ko sa inyo. At ito po mga bunso, mga moms and sirs, sasabihin ko sana mga karadyo kasi nasanay na rin ako. Pero ito po, ay, I am proud to say na ito po ay produkto ng... Uh, syempre ng learning, ng experience din natin, actually inside and outside radio. So next, number one of course, know your event. So kung sa gera, mahirap pong pumasok sa gera kung hindi mo alam kung ano yung papasukan mo. So kung hindi mo aalamin kung ano yung event na iyong uh, papasukin or yung invitation sa iyo, hindi nedma mo, hindi mo pinansin. So hindi mo rin alam kung ano yung mga weapons, kumbaga, ano yung mga bala, ano yung mga kailangan mong sandata para maging successful yung event na ipinagkatiwala sa iyo. So next please. Ayan. So ano-ano ba yung mga dapat nating malaman? Kasi syempre, uh, hindi naman agad-agad malalaman natin yung buong detalye. But of course, the basics, napaka-importante na yun yung agad na malaman natin. Next. Ayan. First, topic and theme of the event. 
So at least alam natin kung paano tatakbo. Ano ba yung tungkol dito sa event or activity na ito? Next. Date and time. Siyempre, kailangan mong ilagay sa schedule mo yan. Mahirap naman na uh, oo, oo ka ng oo, oo. Sabi nga, bagamat siyempre ang ating uh, uh, activity for today is yes, we can. But of course, you have to consider also yung iba pang mga bagay na meron ka. Kasi ang hirap din na mag yes ka ng mag yes but at the end of the day, makokompromiso mo yung event or activity na ipinagkatiwala sa'yo. Next. Of course, your audience. Siyempre, iba-iba ang trip. Ayan na, allow me to use that term, yung trip ng mga audience natin. Siyempre, kapag halimbawa mga professional yung mga audience natin, iba yung ine-expect na magiging uh, atmosphere o yung tone natin bilang host. Siyempre, kapag ka medyo mga bata-bata yung mga audience natin, like kayo, ang ating mga estudyante ng CLSU, so iba din yung ine-expect din ninyo na magiging tone and atmosphere ng inyong event. Next. Ayan, of course, don't forget na somehow alamin ano ba yung goals and or objectives ng event. Kasi makakatulong ito sa atin para kahit papano, papaano natin i-execute yung event flow. Of course, it will also guide you or us as to how we want the organizers want their audience to experience. So, kailangan... Iaangkla natin sa kung ano yung intention ng no activity na yun, yung magiging mood, magiging tone, magiging atmosphere ng event. Next. Ayan, of course, the key persons in the event. Hindi lang ito tumutukoy dun sa mga speakers, but of course, the organizers, the technical team, ev uh, almost everyone na nasa likod ng event na ito or ng activity. Kasi at least alam mo din kung kanino katatakbo, should something happens, Kanino kahihingi ng guidance? Sino yung magiging contact person or representative ng activity na yun? Next. Next. Ayan, number two, research. Akala ninyo sa mga requirements nyo lang sa school, ang uh, dapat na merong research. Siyempre, mahalaga din, lalo na kung first time kang mag-host, na ikaw ay magre-research. Kung baga ito din yung part ng preparation mo, para sa pagsabak sa gera, kumbaga. Because this can help you prepare your mindset as to how you will handle the event or activity. So, kumbaga, bagamat, uh, generally, we can say na halos uh, may mga parts ng isang activity na pare-pareho lang yung program flow, syempre, kailangan mo pa rin i-consider yung mga nabanggit natin kanina, di ba, yung, uh, yung goals and objectives, the key persons in the event. Say, for example, ang activity is virtual kamustahan. So, hindi mo naman, parang yung, syempre, yung mga audience mo, hindi naman nila i-expect na, na merong lecture series about a particular topic. And they are not expecting it to become formal. So, syempre, lalo na kung first time mo na mag-host, kailangan na alamin mo kung papaano yung galawan sa mga ganong events or activities. So, malaking bagay na meron naman na tayo mga, masasabi natin, endless sources like the YouTube, yung mga tutorials na rin naman. And you can also seek help sa mga alam mong mga at tao na nakapag-host uh, na ng mga ganitong activity. So it also, I believe kasi na ang pagiging isang host, uh, it also challenges us to be humble. Na kumbaga wag tayong mapapagod na magkaroon ng knowledge pa din na ma-improve yung sarili natin bilang isang host. Next. Ayan. So like what I've mentioned kanina dun sa qualities ng isang outstanding host, always put yourself as a listener. So ulitin ko, kailangan alamin mo, identify mo, alin yung mga bagay na ayaw mong marinig sa ganitong activity, alin yung mga bagay na gusto mong marinig sa isang activity. Next. Create the program flow and a habit discussed with the organizer or representative of the activity or event. Bagamat uh, most, uh, hindi man siguro lahat, pero merong ilang mga uh, organizers na sila na rin yung naglalapag ng program flow sa uh, mga magiging hosts, but still, kailangan mo pa aralin yung program flow na yun. Kung baga, kailangan na uh, you take it by heart. Kasi sa pamamagitan nito, makakatulong to para mas makadiskarte ka, mas makapag-prepare ka. And of course, uh, yung mindset mo din, papaano mo pa din handle yung event or activity. Next. So more hosting tips before an event or activity. Of course, aside from preparing your program flow, prepare your script. Ayan. So, kagaya ng mga artista, 
Siyempre, ang mga host din po natin, kailangan po na may script. Next. Ito, a little information or a little trivia. Ayon sa Forbes magazine, 10% ng uh, population loves public speaking. Some uh, are terrified of it and the remaining 80% falls somewhere in the middle. So it just shows na regardless kung confident ka na as a public speaker or as a host or may stage fright ka pa din or among other personal fears or issues mo when it comes to being a host, kailangan na armado ka pa din. And one way to prepare yourself is of course to prepare your script. Next. So, ano ba itong tinatawag natin na script? So, on an, on a host's perspective, so ito yung blueprint for your event that defines the dialogue of one or more presenters and the order in which they will occur. So, kumbaga, uh, kung yung program flow, ito yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng bawat parts ng program, yung script naman yung magsisilbi nating guide, magsisilbi nating outline kung papaano natin i-execute, i-deliver, or minsan may mga instances na uh, nandun na rin yung ilang parts nung sasabihin mo. So, yun yung difference actually ng program flow at yung script. So, next slide please. So, ayan. Bakit ba kailangan natin na merong script? Siyempre, sabi nga natin, di ba, ang lahat ng mga bagay na nangyayari sa mundo ay mayroong dahilan. So, in relation to that, bakit ba kailangan natin ng script? Ba't kailangan natin umeffort na gumawa ng script? Next. Of course, it guides the flow of your presentation or event. Uh, Siyempre, may instances na kahit na veterano ka ng host, may, pa may part pa din na masasabaw ka eh. Kung baga, may lutang moments pa din. So, sa pamamagitan kasi ng script, mabibigyan ka pa rin ng guide pa paano mo i-deliver yung particular presentation or part of the program. Next. It ensures you have enough to say. Oo din. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? Kami mismo sa radyo in our experience, talagang may times na sabaw kami, may it be may kasama kami or wala. Sa pamamagitan ng script, nag-guide pa rin tayo, nag-guide pa rin kami actually kung saang part na kami kapag medyo naliligaw na rin kami ng landas, kumbaga, nakakatulong ito sa atin or makakatulong ito sa atin para at least uh, ma... May instances mo na mag din tayo, di ba? Medyo mag, sabi nga, mag-buffer, mag-loading tayo. In the middle of the program, most especially, hindi tayo sobrang maliligaw at hindi tayo yung totally mawawala na doon sa program flow or doon sa particular event of the program. Next. And of course, ayan, it keeps you organized. Kasi syempre, ah, uh, Lalo na kapag na, nasa mismong event proper ka na or activity proper, marami pa rin kasing ideas ang papasok sa isip mo. So with that, nakakatulong ito para kahit pa paano may organize yung thoughts mo at kung paano mo din i-execute yung bawat part ng program. Next. And of course, it prevents you from going off on a tangent and running over your allotted time. So part pa din ito ng pagiging time conscious natin. Nag-guide tayo kung hanggang saan lang yung part natin and part of the particular uh, program flow natin. Next. Ayan. Napaka-importante po nito. Practice, practice, and of course, practice. And ito ha, ah, while you practice, please, please, please avoid memorizing your lines in the script. So, bakit? Nawawala kasi yung, nat uh, yung naturalness na pwede mong ibigay doon sa ano doon sa program actually kami sa ano sa Radio CLS if i may share uh, sila meet si i think hindi na to na experience pero yung mga previous batches kapag uh, meron kasi silang subject na radio broadcasting so kami talaga dine discourage namin na sobrang magrely sa script odo sinabi ko kanina na kailangan yung script pero as much as possible uh, iwasan natin na every word every detail talaga nandun sa script kasi mawawala yung pagkakataon mo, yung freedom mo to express yourself more. Lalo na virtual ang setup natin and I must say na yung mga audience natin, especially CLSU students, mga matatalino na po ang ating audience, ang ating mga listeners and viewers, madali nilang nalalaman kapag binabasa or masyado kang dependent sa iyong script. Maganda na syempre nandyan ang script that, uh, which will serve as our guide and yet 
nawawala yung naturalesa natin. Yung pwede sana tayo makapagbigay ng adlib, kaya lang hindi natin mabitawan yung adlib, yung punchline na kinakailangan kasi nga nakakulong tayo dun sa script. And of course, yung freedom then to explore, ba diba? kahit pa paano, And of course, the interaction mawawala din kasi mapapressure tayo na once na makalimutan din natin yung particular words sa script, mawawala na tayo sa circulation, mawawala na tayo doon sa momentum ng program. Ayun, so next. Ayan, schedule a dry run with the organizers of the activity or event. So napakaganda din po na meron tayong disiplina na a few days before the event, mag-schedule po tayo ng dry run. So dito na natin test lahat. Yung technicals, Uh, if possible, na may time din to practice kung paano mo i-deliver yung, yung script o yung uh, program flow. So, ito yung magandang pagkakataon para gawin ito. And I, I recommend and I suggest na do it with the organizers of the activity or event. Bagamat, uh, I believe that uh, CLSU uh, uh, student organizations, nagkakaroon sila ng, or, ng mga dry run activities, but if there's... Uh, an instance na may ma-encounter kayo na hindi nila na-consider yung dry run, magandang bagay na i-suggest or i-recommend yun ito. Next. So now that uh, I have shared some hosting tips before, yung mga bagay na ipe-prepare natin sa sarili natin before the activity, ngayon naman, ano yung mga dapat o ilang mga bagay na dapat nating tandaan during the event or activity? First, eto, nako, acknowledge your emotions at the moment. Yet, do something about it. Lalo na sa mga first time na mag-host, may mga pagkakataon kasi na sobrang pressured, sobrang kinakabahan, ba? Diba? And same as with uh, ano na, mga well-experienced host na, kagaya ni na Miss Mitzi at saka ni Justin. So, uh, bagamat hindi na nanenerbyo siguro, hindi na pressured, but yung excitement, yung sobrang excitement din kasi na nararamdaman natin, somehow medyo nakakasira din kahit pa paano sa momentum mo, even before you start the event or activity. So mahalaga na i-acknowledge mo kung ano nararamdaman mo, i-assess mo kung ano nararamdaman mo about it, pero wag kang titigil doon. Kailangan gawan mo ng paraan yon Actually, minabasa akong isang article na uh, kapag daw tayo ay ninenerbyos or mayroong anxiety, Let's try to make it a uh, point na yung nervousness and anxiety na yun, palitan natin ng uh, excitement. So kumbaga na sa mindset natin na tayo ay kung paano kumbaga kung paano natin nasasabi sa sarili natin din nervous tayo. I'm so pressured, I'm so af afraid. So palitan natin kumbaga yung mindset natin, kumbaga sabi nga it's all in the mind eh. Na i-instill uh, natin sa ating mga isipan. I know easier said than done, but it takes courage. It takes practice also na i-convert natin into something more positive yung ating emotions. But sabi ko nga, wag natin i-disregard kasi mas mahirap kapag ganun. Next. Ayan, create a good impression to your audience. So uh, with the virtual setups that we have, uh, ilan sa mga bagay na makakatulong for us to create a good impression is that first, we should be physically good. Uh, Uh, presentable. Hindi naman kinakailangan na sobra ka mag-make up, ba? Diba? Pero kailangan, ayusin mo yung sarili mo, i-present mo yung sarili mo at bigyan mo kami ng dahilan para mag-stay kami doon sa event because we find you physically appealing. And of course, sabi ko nga kanina, boses ang isa din sa puhunan natin kapag nag-host tayo. So sa pamamagitan din ng uh, on how we deliver yung mga lines natin, yung mga parts of the program, malaking bagay ito to create a good impression to our audience. Kasi sabi nga natin, di ba, the tendency, there's, there's always a tendency na lalayasan tayo ng audience natin kapag hindi na maganda, agad-agad yung impression natin sa kanila. Next. Ayan, number three, speak using your natural voice. Yet, make sure you are clear and understandable. So, ilan sa mga na-encounter ko actually kapag nag-host, meron silang mga ginagayang mga particular uh, celebrities or public figures or journalists or mga broadcasters Then, While uh, it can help you to uh, para mas magkaroon ka ng idea how to execute yung hosting na the hosting of a particular activity or event, hindi po maganda kasi actually na ginagaya na natin siya. 
while we are uh, meron tayong mga inaay na mga particular celebrities or public figures na yon but still at the end of the day napakalaking bagay na gagamitin natin yung ating natural voice kasi ang hirap pong magpanggap di ba in every aspect of our being same as with hosting napakahirap pong magpanggap at ang hirap pong i-sustain ng pagpapanggap even sa ating natural voice like for example ginagaya mo si Mike Enriquez so dahil hindi ka naman si Mike Enriquez, Enriquez, hindi mo mapoportray all the time yung boses ni Mike Enriquez at hindi all the time ay applicable na magmala Mike Enriquez tayo sa mga programs or activities na ini-entrust sa atin para i-host. Next. Ayan, of course, avoid distractions. Isa actually ang mga distractions kagaya nga nung sabi ni ano kanina ni Miss Mitzi na may mga uh, andyan ang tilaok ng manok ang kahol ng aso, yung mga iba pang mga background noises din. So as much as possible, as part din ng pagpaprepare mo sa, sa event or activity na yan, kailangan na masigurado mo na nasa tahimik ha. Hindi man yung pinakatahimik, pero yung alam mo na hindi ka masyadong madidistract. And of course, aside from that, uh, makakasira din kasi sa momento mo yon bilang isang host kapag merong mga distraction. So yung presence of mind, of course, nandyan pa rin dapat. Next. Ayan. Remember, sabi ko nga kanina, you are not the star of the show. Okay? Hindi porki ikaw yung nasa front line, hindi porki ikaw yung nakikita ng ating mga audience, ibig sabihin nun, ikaw na ang artista. So, meron pa rin po mga tao na kailangan natin ipakilala. Of course, our speakers, say for example. So, ang role natin, I sabi ko nga kanina dun sa una pa lang, one of our role is bilang isang host is to properly introduce the key persons in, in the event. So wag kumbaga parang in short, uh, it takes humility din kasi bilang isang host na kailangan ni instill mo sa sarili mo na baga ikaw yung nandiyan, ikaw yung nakaharap. Hindi ibig sabihin no na ikaw yung bida all the time. Kailangan magbigay pa rin tayo ng spaces sa mga people behind the event or the activity, and most especially sa ating mga speakers. Next. Ayan, yung kagaya na nabanggit ko kanina, have your presence of mind at all times. So, syempre, napaka-importante na uh, you are always on track sa program flow. Of course, uh, kailangan yung interaction, lalo na sa mga question and answers, which is somehow challenging din sa mga hosts. So, kailangan nandun ka kung nasaan yung program flow. Hindi yung, okay, na-introduce mo na yung speaker. Tapos, hindi ka na makikinig sa speaker. Kasi ang laking bagay, kung napapansin ninyo sa iba pang mga virtual activities, and even si Miss Mitzi, tsaka si, si Justin kanina, si Sir Justin, after the presentation ng ating dalawang naunang speakers, meron sila palaging iniiwan sa atin na learnings nila, uh, yung wisdom na natutunan nila. So, makakatulong yung presence of mind para ma-share din natin sa ating mga audience ano yung mga natutunan mo, ano yung mga somehow na-enlighten ka doon sa mga sinabit na i-share ng mga speakers. Next. So after the event or activity, actually ito yung sa palagay ko at sa paniniwala ko, ito yung isa sa mga disregarded parts ng pagiging host. So uh, itong mga isi-share ko, sana ito ay uh, maging baon pa rin natin. And even siguro uh, as an audience, malaking bagay din na maging honest tayo sa first, of course, pagre-review ng event and evaluate ourselves. So kumbaga, uh, bilang isang host, kailangan na open ka for uh, criticisms, for feedback, di ba? Kasi it, uh, it will help you to grow more and be a better host. Mahirap yung ang tatanggapin mo lang din positive. Di ba? Ang hirap naman din kung puro negative na lang din yung tatanggapin mo. And on the perspective naman ng ating mga audience, sana uh, fortunately may mga evaluation forms tayo at iba pa siguro ang platforms where we can share our thoughts doon sa mga particular events or activities. So sana maging honest enough din tayo sa pag evaluate and of course, let's do it in a proper way. Okay? Iwasan po natin ang pambabash even sa evaluation. Next. Ayan, always seek feedback for improvements. So most of us ay natatakot na marinig yung feedback ng mga, uh, say for example, ng mga uh, organizers, ng mga audience. Ayaw nila ng feedback kasi nga, uh, andun lagi kasi yung fear. 
minsan may guilt feeling din na kapag halimbawa medyo hindi maganda yung feedback or parang something to improve. Pero ang nagiging dating sa atin, parang, hi, hala, hindi ko pala na ibigay itong part na to. Hala, hindi ko pala na i-share ng maayos itong part na ito. So, uh, it's always on the perspective din kasi. Kung titignan natin palagi yung feedback, especially yung mga not so good feedback as something against us, so papaano tayo mag-grow, especially bilang host? And same as with positive feedback, kung titignan natin siya as something na parang, ay, ang galing ko ng host kasi ganito yung feedback nila. So, nawawala din yung essence ng discipline at ng humility. And of course, somehow nakakasira din ito ng passion mo bilang isang host. And of course, asabi ko nga kung bagay, kahit na gaano ka nakatagal na host, first time man, o talagang pang ilang beses mo pa lang na ikaw ay host, kailangan na lagi po tayo naghahanap ng improvement. And sana, both good and bad feedback po. We must take it professionally. Next. Ayan, of course, exert efforts to improve and maintain the identified strong point. So kapag yung mga feedback po na nare-receive natin, eh wag lang po natin hayaan na feedback lang. So magandang bagay po na ang mga feedback, yung mga critic criticism sa atin, nandyan po para maging way, para mas alam natin po paano natin i-develop yung sarili natin, po paano natin i-improve yung sarili natin as a host. And kung meron lang po mga identified strong points, gawa pa rin po tayo ng effort para ma-maintain or kung kakayanin pa na mas i-improve yung mga strong points natin. Para uh, dumating man dun sa point na we can say another yes, we can or yes, I can sa event or activity na i-entrust sa atin, malaking bagay na mas confident na tayo kasi alam natin na mas napagbuti at mas napagbubuti pa natin yung pagiging host natin. Next. So remember, uh, some, key take, uh, some key takeaways lang siguro before I officially end my presentation. Ayan, sabi nga ng isang... Uh, uh, performer na si Ice T. A good MC will rhyme a lot of different ways. Don't limit yourself. Napakarami pong pagkakataon, napakarami pong paraan para improve natin yung sarili natin, ma-explore natin ang hosting. So, and of course, hindi naman po lahat ng host at hindi po yung hosting process ay nangyayari po overnight. Sabi ko nga po, it takes courage, it takes time para mas maging maayos po at effective po tayo na host. And of course, uh, next. Ayan, according to another performer, Lazarus of Bethany, to me, part of being MC is dedicated to speaking out about what's going on around us. So bilang host, tayo po yung mas magpapakilala tungkol po dun sa event or activity na in sa atin. Next. Ayan, so uh, allow me to... To remind uh, our bunsos, our moms and sirs na makinig po sa Radio CLSU. So, uh, bagamat hindi pa tayo napapakinggan through analog radios because of some problems sa transmitter, ayan yung Facebook page natin. So, sana mapakinggan yung iba't ibang mga programs natin. And should there be questions, concerns, and if you want to know more about posting, ayan, you can... Uh, you uh, feel free to add me on Facebook. And of course, yung feedback po ninyo malaking bagay po sa akin. So, that's it. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I hope na marami po kayo natutunan sa aking presentation. Thank you! So, ayun. Thank you so much po, DJ Bads. Um, hosts really have a big role in facilitating events, especially now that we are on this kind of setup. Personally po, I observe a lot bilang baguhan po sa hosting and ang pinaka ang pinaka napulot ko po aside from being prepared is that whatever happens mabulol man or magsabaw-sabaw man yung thoughts or magkaroon man ng technical difficulties uh, dapat ano lang dapat hindi tayo pinanghihinaan ng loob and the show must go on yes so partner yes ano that's right part <laughs> Yes, thank you, partner. That's right. Thank you rin po, DJ Bats. Very insightful and very practical tips na binigay niya po sa amin. And bukod sa dagkaragdagan na lang po sa sinabi ni partner, sa akin naman, ang pinakatumatak sa akin ay that we should always be a good listener. Hindi lang dapat tayo puro chika. Hindi lang din tayo dapat puro talk lang. Dapat marunong din tayong makinig. Bukod sa makinig sa mga sinasabi natin, makinig din tayo sa kung paano ba 
mag-respond yung audience natin or we should put ourselves to uh, sa, sa mga shoes nila bago tayo maging isang effective na speaker, ba? Diba? So, from digital, uh, from written communication to hosting, ang dami nating natutunan this morning, di ba, partner? And I guess marami din questions ang ating mga viewers this morning. So, yes, partner. Uh, so, andito na rin pala si Ma'am Linnell. So, pwede na nating simulan ang ating Q&A portion. So, for our first question, this is for Ma'am Linnell. So, how the digital written communication can alter our world today? Okay, so I would like some context sana on the world alter, ano, kung, kung paano. I guess um, I, I'll just surmise na by alter, um, he or she or they mean that um, paano nababago nito yung uh, way of communication natin today. So like I've said earlier, no, digital written communication has always been part of our lives, lalo na sa atin na mga pinanganak wherein nag exist na ang text, ang, uh, nag exist na ang, ang cellphone, ang text, ang email, di ba? Parang lumaki na tayo, nakasama na natin yan. So in some way, talagang um, alam na natin itong inavigate. However, during this, uh, during this time of pandemic, especially uh, dito sa Philippines, where in sobrang limited pa rin ang in-person communication, talagang nagre-rely tayo dito uh, mostly on uh, on our communication processes. And in a way, it is very taxing on our part, di ba? Kasi tayo social beings tayo eh. We humans are really social beings, so we have to really um, to really incorporate ourselves and to always be with other persons. Yung ganun, we always have to communicate and nagre-rely tayo heavily on this non-verbal cues na nakukuha natin during in-person, in-person communication. But then suddenly, dahil nga sa pandemic, nailagay tayo dito sa predicament na, na, na kinalalagyan natin. So talaga, undeniably, mahirap. So what we can do instead is to adapt. So yun ang nangyari. Again, this is uh, a reminder na digital digital written communication has always been part of our lives. Ngayon lang, talagang na-heighten lang yung need for it. So yun. Thank you po, Ma'am Linnell. And we hope na take note nyo yun, guys, sa ating mga dear participants. And for our second question po, for DJ Bads, Sabi po rito, how do we pre- prevent stuttering? Kakastutter ko lang. How do we prevent stuttering due to nervousness whenever we are asked to talk in public? Actually, ako naman din kasi until now, na-experience ko pa rin na ma-stutter. So, one way to ano to to overcome that kasi ano yan eh, it happens even in the middle of the ano eh, the, the discussion so siguro ano na lang din kagayang pero to prevent kahit pa paano is that first sabi ko nga kanina you must acknowledge what you're feeling at that moment kasi ang hirap din na iso, parang i-dead mo na ninenervous ka or uh, alam mo yon kahit pa paano kasi kung hindi mo i-deal agad-agad yung nararamdaman mong nervousness or parang magiging dead makasa kung ano man yung nararamdaman mo. Actually, it will also, it, kumbaga, makaka-trigger lalo yun para mag-stutter ka. Kasi, clouded din kasi yung mindset mo kapag ganin nervous ka eh. Nawawala ka sa focus, nawawala ka sa, sa, my, sa proper mindset na dapat, syempre, ibigay natin sa ating mga nagiging audience. And another one, uh, siguro yung part din ng pagpapractice is that we seek help sa mga pinagkakatiwalaan natin like family members pwede siguro na bago yung mismong event proper or yung activity proper uh, mag-set ka rin ng time na makapag-practice in front sa iyong mga pinagkakatiwalaan tao sa buhay mo kasi makakatulong yon para kahit pa paano mabawasan yung possible na kaba and of course makakatulong din sila para mas maiguide ka kung paano mo mas maiaayos pa yung pag-host mo even before the event proper Thank you po. Thank you po, ma'am. Um, ayun po, na 
na take note ko po yan. <laughs> Bilang sobrang prone sa mga ganong oh, pag-starter ano po. Yan, even kami, I believe most of the hosts na kahit nagaano na sila kahasado, may mga pagkakataon pa rin na ganun. And unfortunately, may instances din na hindi din sila physically okay, mentally and emotionally okay. But sabi ko nga, paulit-ulit po minimension na the, the show must still go on. Hindi po pwede yung audience natin yung mag adjust na parang, okay guys, hindi ako okay, may sakit ako, so kayo mag-adjust sa akin. Hindi po pwede yung ganun. Kailangan ibigay pa rin natin yung best natin, di ba? Dahil sabi ko nga, frontliner tayo ng bawat event or activity and malaking responsibility yung ibinibigay sa atin kapag kinukuha tayong hosts eh. So, uh, It happens, pero yun, tuloy-tuloy lang, tuloy-tuloy lang. Importante na ibabawi natin kahit na kinakabahan tayo, kahit na bubulol. May instance na, na akala natin, hindi tayo muted, pero nakamute pala tayo yung mga ganon. So, tuloy-tuloy lang. So, it happens. It happens all the time. Yes. Thank you po, DJ Bads. So, ang susunod po nating tanong is for Ma'am Linel. Uh, how to create a strong headline, title, or hook po? Naka, mukhang napunta tayo sa journalism dito. Ah. Pero still, sige, ano lang natin yan. So, di ba, like I've always say, lalo na sa mga may experience sa journalism or sa campus journalism, di ba? Laging, ano, meron kayong isang topic lagi na, na binibigay sa inyo. May set of data na pare-pareho kayo, ganyan. Pero it's it always falls down sa angulo. Sa angulo lagi nagkakatalo-talo. Lagi mong iisipin, ano ba yung pinaka ano, ano ba ang pinaka pin, pinaka important na part nito? Ano ba yung angulo na mahalagang i-highlight dito? Syempre, yung angulo ilalagay mo rin niya sa konteksto kung ano yung nangyayari sa mundo, di ba? Kung ano yung kung ano yung status ko ng mundo. So doon, sa mukhang journalism kasi ito when we say headline ganyan eh, headline title hook, di ba? More of journalism to and medyo malayo dun sa toko. But but still, pwede mo din tong i-apply doon sa sa sinabi ko kanina sa email. Siyempre, pag naglagay ka ng subject line, ilagay mo kung ano talaga yung most pressing issue doon sa email mo, kung ano talaga yung kailangan mo. So yun, I guess na na answer ko kasi I don't know kung saan context yung headline, but I just ano, went I I just went through both para sure. <laughs> Yes, thank you po Ma'am Ma'am Linel. Baka po estudyante niya 'yung nagpatanong. No? <laughs> <laughs> Oo, oh, may deadline kasi sila. <laughs> so, ala. <laughs> so, may deadline kasi sila so <laughs> baka 'yun nga. We can yes. talk naman after this kung estudyante kita. I am willing naman to teach you. Siya <laughs> teacher mo naman ako. You can always reach out. <laughs> yes. Baka ikaw yes. 'yung witch niya. <laughs> Ang hindi po ako. Flavor po. Joke. Thank you po, Ma'am Linel. And for our fourth question, meron pa po tayong question dito for DJ Bads po. Uh, medyo, please bear with me po. How do hosts handle a crowd without getting or making the scene awkward? And for a student with anxiety who wanted to try, what can we do to overcome being anxious and on panic during a speech or hosting in front of the crowd? Thank you po. Uh, Doon sa first question, actually, napapaisip din ako kung paano ba i-handle yung crowd. Pero uh, I believe that there's, ay, bilang host, you have to acknowledge that. Eh. Pero nasa tamang konteksto at tamang paraan na parang uh, you have to acknowledge na yung particular scene or yung crowd ay medyo unhealthy na for the event. So, I, I guess there's always a proper way to say that. And you have to acknowledge that bilang host. Kasi ang hirap na dededmahin mo yung particular scene, yung particular crowd, or kung ano man yung mga uh, distractions doon sa event proper or sa activity. Doon sa making the scene awkward, actually, yun, kaya ko din na ibahagi kanina sa uh, isa sa mga practical tips na kailang, or the qualities rather, is the ability to improvise. Kasi kapag may mga ganong mga eksena na, oy, parang medyo, ay, paano ko i-deliver to? Ay, papaano ko? Kasi actually, on my experience, meron kaming naging, na-interview, actually, uh, naka-livestream kami, na, meron siyang minensyo na rated SPG na lahat kami, parang, 
shock kami kasi nga syempre nasa media ka. Bawal sabihin yung word na yon. So paano namin siya na over paano namin siya medyo na address siguro parang dun sa part na lang na parang ah, sinabi na lang namin na uh, it's his perspective parang ganon. So parang din, medyo may konting disclaimer na parang Uh, bagamat it happens pero yun, medyo may konting disclaimer at the at the same time gagawa ka ng paraan para ma-convert yung attention from that awkward scene na parang okay mag-proceed na tayo sa next part of the program or sa next part of the discussion na tayo minsan pwede mo siyang daanin din sa biro na parang okay so medyo nakakarami na ng awkward moment so okay proceed na tayo mag-move on na tayo di ba may mga ganong paandar especially kapag uh, mga bagets naman kumbaga yung audience natin para kahit pa paano ma-divert din from that awkward moment into something na magaan without compromising yung overall natakbo ng program kasi talagang di natin maiiwasan yan di natin makokontrol yung mga awkward scenes awkward statements na yan So, pwede nating daanin sa konting punchline. O kaya, divert muna from the next part of the program without as much as possible na medyo awkward din. So, transition and the ability to improvise ay talagang nandun pa rin. And dun sa uh, follow-up question niya na student with anxiety who wanted to try, uh, lagi ko rin kasi na share actually na kapag hindi ka kasi kinabahan, ibig sabihin nun, wala kang nakikitang paraan para i-improve yung sarili mo. Even in hosting, kasi lahat tayo dumaan dyan, kinabahan. Uh, may it be a speech, may it be a hosting opportunity, lahat tayo kinabahan at maaring hanggang ngayon kinakabahan pa rin tayo. But still, sabi ko nga, uulitin ko lang din yung sinabi ko kanina, na we have to acknowledge what we're feeling at that moment, then do something about it. Huwag mong gadmahin yung nararamdaman mo. Huwag mong i-deny sa sarili mo na may anxiety ka, may stage fright ka, kinakabahan ka. Kasi kung i-deny mo yung sa sarili mo, hindi hindi ka din mag-grow eh doon sa bilang a, a better speaker or a better host. And of course, andyan pa rin yung pagpapractice. Kasi malaki ang naitutulong ng pagpapractice para kahit pa paano malesen. Hindi man mawala entirely yung anxiety, yung nervousness or over-excitement, pero malaki yung may tutulong man para mabawasan. And of course, the script is always there, pero paalala ko lang din na hindi porke may script, i-rely mo doon lahat ng sasabihin mo. As much as possible, yung script ay magsisilbing guide natin sa kung paano natin i-execute yung speech or of course, yung particular program na inentrust sa atin. All right, thank you for DJ Bads. Uh, partner, may you share ka pa bang takeaways? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Ayun. <laughs> Ayun, ang daming ang daming ang ano, ang daming learnings na na, na nakukuha ko kay DJ Bads kasi and pati na rin kay Ma'am Linel kasi ako talaga sobrang kinakabahan talaga ako kapag ano kapag nag-host ganyan. And hindi talaga ako, now talaga inaamin ko hindi po ako prepared kasi kagabi lang po ako um, nasabihan. Pero ayun po, tinatry ko yung best ko para i-compose yung sarili ko. And ayun, habang ano po, nakikinig po ako sa inyo and lalo po akong natututo talaga sa tips po na binibigyan niyo. Thank you po. Yes, I agree with you, partner. And of course, sa mga this morning, ang pinaka keyword siguro natin ay to really... Uh, learn. Huwag kang matakot matuto. Huwag kang mag-try na ay huwag kang mag-try. Huwag kang mahiyang mag-try na sumubok ng iba pang skills or iba pang mga uh, paano ba? Mag, mag, huwag kang mahiyang masumubok mag, sa pagsusulat man or sa pag-host. Always, ano, always make room for improvements. Always make room for learnings. New learnings. ba? Diba? Kasi nga we are, ano, we are Uh, learning every single day. So thank you so much for DJ Bads and Mom Linel. And as a mark of our appreciation to our second and third resource speakers for today's webinar episode, we would like to award this certificate of appreciation. And uh, the certificate of appreciation is given to Ma'am Linel M. Alejandro and Ma'am Maria Bernadette M. Pagio for sharing their time and expertise as the resource speaker of the topic 
Interfaces Digital Written Communication and Interfaces Hosting Skill Development as part of the first CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes We Can, held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on September 25, 2021, signed by Daisy Acuna, the Executive President of Veterinary Circle for 10, and Dr. Froyland Bernard Matias, the Advisor of VC10. Please accept our thanks for a great and insightful presentation po, ma'ams. Thank you so much po. Thank you so much po. Uh, before we do our wrap, wrap up, uh, may I invite again our participants here on Zoom to turn on their cameras, please, for a group photo. Mitzi will do the countdown to the picture taking. Yes, all right. So ready na bang lahat? Baka nagre-retouch pa sila. Okay, let's... Okay, in three, two, one, smile! Okay, isa pa, yung ngiting pasado. Okay, ngiting pasado. Three, yes, in three, two, one, smile. Ayan, there we go. Thank you so much po, Ma'am Linnell and DJ Bads. We're very glad to have you both as our resource speakers for this activity. Maraming salamat po. Thank you po. Once again, we would like to remind our participants that you can post or tweet your takeaways with the hashtags. Hashtag CLSU Youth Empowerment Series and hashtag Yes, we can. And make sure that the post or tweet is public, privately setting. Watch out for our bonus questions, which we'll post after this webinar on our Facebook page, Veterinary Circle for 10. We will choose one winner per topic. So make sure to join us and get a chance to win 50 pesos. Yes, you may also post as my day or my story on your Instagram and or Facebook accounts using the templates that we have prepared for you. O oh, diba? May pa-template tayo. You may access the template through the link which is on the screen and is in the Zoom chat box and Facebook comment section. So please don't forget to tag us at Veterinary Circle for 10 and use our official hashtags mentioned a while ago. And we encourage everyone to please do spare us a moment of your time to fill out the evaluation form for this web for this episode. At yung link at yung QR code ay makikita po natin sa screen right now. So you may claim your e-certificate. Uulitin po namin, ang makakakuha lang po ng certificate ay yung mga nakapag-register at yung nakapag-fill out ng evaluation form. So... Also, kung sakaling may na-miss kayo na part or gusto nyong balikan itong episode na to, maaari, the recordings of our webinar episode today will also be posted on our YouTube account at Veterinary Circle for 10, whose link will be sent to you via email and will be posted on our Facebook page. So, ayun na nga, partner. This ends our first episode of this webinar series. But wait. There's more. We would like to invite ev everyone for our second episode, which will happen on October 2, 2021, Saturday next week. Make sure to, to save the date, so mark your calendars because we hope to see you all again next week. To register, please visit our Facebook page, Veterinary Circle 410, and check the promotional materials that we will be posting and fill out the registration form by clicking the link provided or by scanning the QR code on the poster. Yes, and to keep yourselves updated with our latest and upcoming activities like this, if you haven't, please give us a like and a follow on our official Facebook page at Veterinary Circle for 10. And we are also on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. On Instagram and YouTube, you may follow us at the same name, Veterinary Circle for 10. On Twitter, follow us at CLSU Visit 10. And you may also follow our dear partners for this webinar through their social media accounts that you'll see on screen. So we have here Youth Led PH, the VSG, 
the SGCLSU, CLSU DEFCOM Student Council, and CLSU USSC. So, ayan. To formally conclude this webinar episode, here is Veterinary Circle for 10 former OIC Executive President Arthur Ashley Descanso. In behalf of the Veterinary Circle for 10, I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to all the participants here in Zoom and those who are watching via Facebook Live. We hope that you are empowered by the first part of this CLSU Youth Empowerment Series and that you can finally say to yourselves, Yes, I'm a youth leader. Yes, I'm a digital citizen. I'm a CLSU one. And yes, I can. Thank you also to our esteemed guest speakers, Mr. Christopher Castillo from the Department of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Lionel Alejandro, the advisor of DCSC, and Ms. Maria Bernadette Pagio of Radio CLSU for sharing your knowledge and experience in your respective fields of expertise. This activity would also not be successful without the help of our partner student councils, organizations, and offices in the university. We hope to see you again on the second and last part of this webinar series next week. Thank you once again and stay safe everyone. Yes, thank you so much, Circular Ash. Circular Ash. And before we end, we would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to our partner organizations for this activity, the Youth Leadership for Democracy or Youth-Led Philippines, CLS University Supreme Student Council, Veterinary Student Government, Development Communication Student Council, the College of Business Administration and Accountancy Corporate Student Government, and College of Engineering Student Government. This webinar is also in collaboration with the Office of Student Affairs, CLSU, CLSU Student Organization Unit, or OSA, CLSU Collegian, and Radio CLSU, with support from the College of Science and Student Council, Social Sciences Student Council, College of Education Student Council. Um, we, all, we also wish to thank the CLSU Maestro Singers for supporting our activity by giving us their piece during the introductory remarks. Yes, thank you so much po sa bawat isa. And once again, we are requesting our dear participants on Zoom to kindly turn on the cameras for a photo of last na to guys so please and one of our one. facilitators on zoom will be taking the photo after the count show us your brightest smiles today and allow me to or orchestrate the countdown in three two one smile okay another one walk it down in three two one there we go. So on behalf of the Veterinary Circle for 10 and our partner organizations, we wish to extend you all our most genuine appreciation for joining us on Zoom and for those who, who, who tuned in to watch us on our Facebook stream. Thank you so much. Yes, and that's about everything. Salamat na lang sa lahat, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Just kidding. Thank you so much, guys. We hope everyone watching this is safe at home and I'm sure everyone's hungry. So now we can all have our lunch. And once again, I am Mitzi. And I am Justin. We have been your moderators for this first episode of CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes, We Can. We hope to see you all again on Saturday for our second episode. Yes, ingat po at maraming salamat. See you all on Saturday. God bless. Thank you po.
Thank you.